Let us bow our heads just a moment. Heavenly Father, we are grateful to Thee today for this privilege of assembling together one more time, knowing that someday we will assemble for our last time as mortals, and then we'll assemble in a glorified state with Thee. And all the redeemed of all ages shall be assembled there. All our hearts beat high and have great anticipation waiting for that hour to arrive. With that, all fears vanish from us. We have nothing to fear, nothing to dread. We look forward to the promise that the eternal God has made us. And we know that it's truth. That is why we live. We live for that, that hour, that time, when this mortal will be changed and will be made like him. And there will be no more sickness, no more sorrow, no more heartaches. Oh, it'll all be over then. And with joy of heart, we in faith and courage, we look forward for that day. That's why we are gathered here today, Lord, to confess our wrongs and ask for mercy. That's why we face this altar this morning. Because that we know we're mortal and there's many mistakes in us and we're full of fault. But we come to confess our wrongs and then look to our Heavenly Father with open hearts for the blessings and renewal of strength and faith that He would give us in this hour as we have assembled here according to the promise in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. For we claim that we have passed from death unto life by His promise and we are caught up in a heavenly atmosphere setting with Him now. May He teach us this morning the things that He would have us to know and give us the bread of life that we might be sustained for the future that lays before us. Grant it, Lord. This is our prayer that we ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Good morning to everyone. And it's very good to be assembled here with you again this morning in this heavenly atmosphere of worship just a teeny bit late we had a, some real real bad call just a few minutes ago a boy laying there dying and it's as sure as I'm standing here the Lord touched his body and, the road, so, and uh, uh, a boy standing here which is my cousin's son they were really Catholic to begin with, but they went to Mass this morning and something told them to come here. And so they, there's a change. So they are, they are coming out the house and pre prepare for water baptism. So then um, there's, a, uh, there's a, just wonderful things that our Lord does all the time. He's just constantly doing things. They come to get in and... Uh, they couldn't get in. They said, there's just no way to get in. I said, well, you want to talk to me? And I said, well, just come on up to the house and we'll talk that over there. So I thought on my road to New York now to this meeting coming up that it would just be so nice. I know I'd be refreshed to drop in and, and uh, help light my fire from what far you all have. And uh, we stopped for a, a day this morning and uh, we got in uh, yesterday, day before yesterday at noon. And then uh, we got to leave. I was going to leave this afternoon, uh, but I think I'll go and we start in the morning early, real early. I, we might have some snow on the roads and things between here and New York. I go through Virginia, through the mountains, and all through, through the Alleghenies, and just in the bottom part then of the, uh, of the Adirondack. So we begin at, I forget, it's the arena there, a new one. They tore the old St. Nicholas Arena down, I understand. They built this new one. And as far as I know, we're getting about some of the first nights that's ever that's been let out. So we're grateful for that, for the greater New York uh, Pentecostal people. And I think we've got several churches cooperating. And we're expecting a great time. And we'll be back, the Lord willing, uh, uh, sometime next week. And, and if it be the will of God, well, we hope to get the stopover for Sunday a week for, for the Sunday morning service. And then uh, I barged right in on our pastor again, as oh, always amen. do you see. And, uh, and I thought maybe if I got in the evening out asking, and then being there's a nice group here, and people I see from out of town are here, I thought maybe tonight, 
if the pastor has got anything Amen. special, that it would be a, we'd have a little service tonight, just Amen. a short one, and uh, maybe pray for the sick. Thank you. We uh, are hoping to pray for the sick tonight, talk on divine healing and, and pray for the Amen. sick. Start early so we can get out early, and if the pastor will... Uh, what you usually start at seven thirty? Is that right? How about starting seven? Amen. Seven. Let me get on at seven thirty. Did I let me out by eight or eight thirty to give people time then to to go? If that's, that's all, all right. <laughs> Everybody laughed. I don't. And I said eight or eight thirty. I I I hope to be at, out at that time. <laughs> Praying for the sick. You know, we never know. <laughs> so we are. I've had a, a great time since leaving you in this last uh, fall early, and. Uh, the Lord has blessed us in many great things, and, and tonight, if the Lord willing, I want to tell you on the last visitation I had from God in Colorado a few weeks ago, and um, that's what I thought I'd bring in, uh, maybe stimulate faith for a good healing service tonight for the sick and the afflicted. Amen. Now this morning, to get right into the service, uh, something struck my heart about a month ago, and... Uh, it might be now. I think they're are they taping this? Are they taping this? All right. So that I would know where if the tape gets out to others. <clears throat> I can't say that what I'm going to speak on this morning. Uh, I can't say that it, it it is. I know it's right. See, the message part will be right. But the thing that I want to do is a question in my mind. It looks so real, and yet since I come in and since I uh, it was revealed to me. I have been so scared that I'd say the wrong thing and might leave the wrong impression upon people. And it's a uh, and I what I had notes wrote down on what I was going to say, I cut part of it out so that I might not make it too strong. Because you see, if a, if a person, I, I love the Lord God, and the only way I know I love Him is because I love you. Amen. See, that's the only way that I know. And yet, I, I don't want to have anything that's revealed to me and then not tell you, if it's to tell you. And then I'm afraid that if I say something a little too strong, it might hurt somebody. And, you know, it's um, you just have to almost just get to the platform and then feel led to say what you're going to say, that's all. And then sometimes you might say something and someone would get the, another slant to it. Yeah. And they'd run off on that side. And then somebody would say, oh, this is this thing. But I want you to know that what I'm going to say is just presuming. And the word presume means to adventure without authority. <laughs> so uh, I, am, uh, I don't say that this is true. But it's just a little thought that I might drop along to you that you might weigh it out and see what you think about it. And then, uh, it'll, of course, it'll, it'll be scriptural because I wouldn't preach nothing. But is that the hour yet? Has this arrived to this hour? And uh, has these things meant that? I pray with all that was in me that it isn't. <laughs> I pray that it isn't right. That it isn't that. I it's going to be. But has it come to that time yet? <laughs> That's Amen. what I want. I, everybody understands thoroughly Amen. that I don't know. I just, is it this time? If it is, God be merciful to us. But if it isn't that time, that it's going to come. Now, as soon as we can, we got a great itinerary in front of us, the Lord willing. And I've got to go overseas right after Christmas in Europe and Asia, uh, uh, Europe especially. And then I come back here to the United States for a few services. And then I go back down into South Africa, I begin on the 2nd of, of September in Durban. And go from the 2nd, I think, to about the 10th. And then I have three days to go to Mary Johannesburg and begin again. But I think it's the month of April we start in the Scandinavian countries and Norway and Sweden and, and Finland and, and Holland and Switzerland and Germany and, and through Europe there. So be in prayer for us. We have a few meetings here Christmas time now, right after Christmas. By the way, we want to be here through Christmas, through at home. The kids want to come home through Christmas. And uh, we... We love Arizona, but you know the, the thing that we miss and just can't get over it is this church and you people. Yeah. No matter where we go, right. what we do, it's it just kids, me, wife, and all. There's just no place like this. 
That's right. There's just no place. I've sailed the seven seas, and I, I've been everywhere, but there's no place that seems hallowed to me like this little spot right up here. Yes, is it? Just get away from it once, if you want. There's just something about here. I've preached all over the world, frankly. And I've never any time, any place ever felt the Spirit of God with freeness and things like I do standing right here. This is it. God let it. It was the day I laid that cornerstone over there. I said, Lord God, don't let it fall. People said, in a two months, it'll be a garage. I said, don't let it fall, Lord. Let it be standing and people in here praising you when Jesus returns. I trust it'll be that way. Now, uh, let us turn in the Bible now and, and um, expect the Lord to give us of his blessings. And we want to read some scriptures. I got some scriptures wrote down here that I want to refer to and some notes. And I want to read out of three places out of the Bible. And I'll give them to you first. I want to read in Jude... Five and six. Jude's just one book, you know. And then I want to read Second Peter, the second chapter, four and five. Then I want to read First Peter three, eighteen to twenty. And my subject this morning, the Lord willing, is souls that are in prison now. Souls that are in prison now. Shut up forever condemned. Never, no way of being saved. See? Souls that have been imprisoned now. Now let's read over in the book of Jude first. I believe I have Mark down here for the first place in Jude, and then over in Second Peter, and then um, oh, then over First Peter. Now Jude uh, would like to read it all, but just to save time because it's ten thirty already. I'm going to begin with the fifth verse. Now Jude was a brother, foster brother of Jesus Christ, as we all know. See, he was uh, Joseph's son. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterwards destroyed them that believe not. Saved them first. Brought them out of Egypt and then had to destroy them because they didn't continue with their message, you see. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he has reserved in everlasting change un chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. <coughs> angels, which once stayed in heaven and kept not their estate, and the way that they were in fell away, and now is in eternal chains of darkness, everlasting chains of darkness, kept in this condition until the judgment of the great day when they'll be judged with the, all the rest of the unbelievers. Now, in Second Peter, the second chapter, beginning with the fourth verse, which will be just a book or two behind it, see? For if God spared not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah and eight persons, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Spared not the angels, put them in chains of darkness, and condemned the whole world by the destruction of, of Noah. Now, in First Peter, the first chapter, and the uh, First Peter, the third chapter, and beginning with the eighteenth verse, we read again. Now, listen close now. For Christ also has once suffered for sins the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. He preached to these people in prison, 
which sometimes were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. Like figure warranty, even baptism does also now save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answering of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Let's pray again. Now, Heavenly Father, such a, a line of Scripture here, three witnesses, three places in the Scripture giving testimony. And Thou hast said in Thy Word that in the mouth of two or three witnesses let every word be established. Now, I pray Thee, O God, that Thou will come to the people and will interpret this word, this message, in the light that it should be in, that every man, woman, boy, or girl might understand in the capacity that you have ordained for them to understand in. And now, knowing that these three witnesses bear record of truth, and I pray that you will send the Holy Spirit upon us now, and we'll a look to Him who is our King in our midst this morning, the Lord Jesus Christ, where we have raised now by faith, setting in these heavenly places in Him. We wait for His message. Speak it through us, Lord. Hear it through us. As we ask you to circumcise the lips that speak and the ears that hear, that it might be to the honor and glory of Him who is the Scripture. For we asked it in his name. Amen. Now, remember the services tonight, a healing service. I don't think it'd be necessary to give out prayer cards, so we just uh, pray yeah. for the sick. I have something I want to tell you, and I, I hope that it'll just bring the congregation into a place to where there'll just be all kinds of healing. I know it will be if we'll just believe it that way. Yeah, but. Now, this souls now in prison, souls that are now in prison. Now, the soul of man is not the body of man, it's the soul. And the soul is something that's uh, the nature of the spirit. And then when the nature of a man, when he said, we are dead, the scripture plainly tells us that we are dead and our lives are hitting God through Christ sealed there by the Holy Spirit. Now, it wasn't that your body died. It wasn't your spirit died. It was the nature of your spirit died. See? The nature, which is the soul. The nature of your soul is, uh, is God. If you're born again. If it's not, it's of the world. Anything that begins has to end. So therefore, the only way that you can have eternal life is to have a life that never did begin. And then your life did begin when you were born. When God breathed the breath of life into your nostrils and you became a living soul, then you began then. But when you, that nature that was in you, by nature you was of the world, alienated from God, you were actually an animal. That's exactly right. Anyone knows that we are a mammal. How many knows that? We, we are a mammal. We are the warm a blooded uh, animal. But that is what we are by our earthly creation. But you see what made us different from other mammals that uh, God put a soul upon us. See? Now the other mammals don't have to wear clothes. No other animal has to wear clothes to hide his shame but us. We're the only ones that does because we have a soul. But see, God in the beginning knew what a man would be like and he created the earth and brought up all kinds of animals from the very lowest to the highest. And the highest animal come forth was man. And then 
First man was made, he was a spirit man. In the image of God, which God is a spirit. St. John 4. Now, he is a, a spirit. And they that worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth. And thy word is the truth. Amen. Now, we worship him in spirit and truth. He is a, a spirit being. Then there was no man to till the soil. And then God formed man out of the dust of the earth. Then he taken from his side a byproduct a rib, and from that separated this man which had a dual nature, which was both feminish and masculine. And he taken the feminish out because it was love, and he placed it into a person called Eve, and Adam called Eve, which was his wife. That's where his love, natural, uh, a filial love, held to his wife. That's where a man should be today, and her back to her husband. The man, the masculine, the woman, the feminish. And then... See, after he done made man in his own image, created he them, male and female, there was no man to till the soil, and he put him in the dust of the earth, and therefore he become, he was that man. This human man was mammal, see? He was animal. But he put this spirit of God alive into him and made him on the uh, basis that he could make a choice. And then when this man, now we think we're something. Just remember, what are we? A clot of dirt. That's all. And because dust thou art, dust thou shalt return. So when you see uh, this man walking down the street, thinks he's somebody, you know, and got a little education, thinks, you remember, it's a clot of Indiana dust. <laughs> that's all. And that woman that's all dressed in shorts and smoking cigarettes and carrying on down the street, twisting like she owned the whole country, it's a clot of Indiana dust. And that's the way it's turning back. <laughs> So you're not very much to begin with, see? So that, that's right. That's what you are. But that soul that's in there, see, that soul is what God's working on. See, if He can only get that nature, that spirit, to agree with Him, then that nature dies. The nature and the love of the world dies and the things of the world's dead. See? Because... If you love the world or the things of the world, the love of God is not in you. See? And a man must be born again. So this nature has to die and the nature of God comes and lives in you. And God is the only thing there is that never did begin or never can end. So therefore, he has partnership, you see, and taken this man earthly and this eternal spirit and put it together because God reflected himself back in that that he become a man when he become Christ Jesus and he was God. See? God was in Christ. That's it. Lived in him, reconciled the world to himself and through that perfect man, each one of us imperfect that believe in God and accepted that becomes the perfection of him and he never left his body see corruption neither did he leave his soul in hell but raised him up on the third day and he's alive forevermore Amen. and we will have a body like his own glorious body that's why we're baptized into his name that we might come forth in his name in his death in his resurrection that we rise again testifying to the world that we have new life that the old man is dead we buried that first nature See? That first nature is gone. And now we are the nature of Him. He lives in us. And we don't do our own will. We do His will. We don't think our own thoughts. The mind. The mind is what thinks. The mind that was in Christ Jesus is in every believer. See, there, there is the soul. And that's what we're speaking of. Now, that's the part that I'm thinking of now. That, that's within us, the soul. Now, if we notice in this, there's many things that happen sometime and we wonder why they happen. And we question ourselves and we question others. But finally, after a while, we find out that if we're Christians, it all works out just right. Somehow you've seen that. All Christians see that. We wonder why we did it. I wondered sometime when I first read the Bible, why did God let Abraham, that great man, ever stand there and say that Sarah wasn't his wife and how that he let him stand there and lie about that and the things that he did and then how did he ever let Abraham leave the promised land where he told him not to leave any Jew that leaves the promised land is backslidden because God gave that to him and promised him to stay there see? and they left it so he went down into Gerir 
But if it hadn't have been for that, and then Amalek, that king down there in the Philistine country, fell in love with Sarah and was going to marry her and was a good man, a righteous man. And after he probably, this sounds ridiculous, but to make it so real to you, after he had his evening bath and put on his pajamas and said his prayers and went to bed, the Lord appeared to him and said, you're just as good as a dead man. And the man had done nothing. See? He was absolutely deceived by both Abraham and Sarah. That's right. He said, you've got another man's wife. See? And I, I won't hear your prayers. No matter how much you pray, you're as good as dead. But that man is my prophet. See? It's hard to understand that. See? But if it wasn't that, we wouldn't know what grace was. Why did he go and marry Hagar after having a lovely wife like Sarah? And he didn't want to do it. See? But Sarah told him, and then the Lord told him, you listen to what Sarah told you. Why? There had to be an Ishmael that the bonds woman and her child would not be heir with the free woman and her child. See what I mean? All these things are types. Why did that prophet have to marry a prostitute and have, with these children, have two children by her as a sign? Why did one lay on his right side for 340 days and then laid so many days on the other side like that as a sign? One stripped his clothes and walked before the, uh, Israel. And I, all those things, it was types and shadows. See? And we have to have those things to fill in. And many times things happen to us that we wonder why it is. It's God for showing us something. Amen. I was a little boy, and you know my life story. I uh, always believed since I can first remember, one of the first things that I remember, now this, uh, you might have told me something yesterday and I'd forget it by today. But there's some things back that happened in our young days, many of us are that way, that we always remember. And this sounds almost ridiculous to say this, but I remember when I was crawling with a long dress on. Little babies, uh, some of you people my age would remember that uh, babies used to wear real long dresses. And I remember crawling and, and dipping snow off of my uncle's feet and eating them when he come in and was standing by the fireplace. And then the next thing I remember taking place in my life was a vision, the first one I ever had, and told me I would live a big portion of my life near a city called New Albany. And I was a little mountain baby up there, not even a doctor when I was born. And, and I, I, you know, they, I've lived here around 50 years right here. A vision. And then how I always knew there was God somewhere. Now, as a little boy, he spoke to me, never to smoke or drink or defile my body. That's running morally with women and things. I had always had a dread of it and uh, was a young man. And then I was out hunting one time, which seems to be a second nature to me, to love to hunt. And I was out hunting with a boy, uh, Jim Poole, lovely kid. I think his boy comes to church here, little Jim. And fine family of people. I know the pool. Jimmy and I slept together and lived together since we were little boys in school. We're about six months apart in age. And Jimmy let his gun go off and shot me through both legs, real close to me, the shotgun. I was taken to the hospital. And there, laying there, dying. No penicillin or nothing in those days. And I, they had a rubber sheet under me. And I know that night they was going to operate the next morning. They just took and cleaned off the wound and big pieces of flesh blowed up and they take scissors and cut it off and I had to hold a man's hands and they had Frankie Ike just recently committed suicide and um, I had to hold and put, pry my hands loose from his wrist when, when they got through I screamed and cried and holding on to like that uh, and then cutting that part of the leg off I was 14 years old just a boy and that night I tried to go to sleep and they, I woke up and something splashed and here was blood nearly a half a gallon I guess had come from them veins and they'd taken an x-ray and they said the shot was laying so close to that artery on either side that just a little scratch would cut it right in two and I started bleeding well I thought this is the end of me and I put my hands down like this and raised it up and the blood running down my hands it was my own blood I was laying in I called rang the bell the nurse came and she just soaked it up with towel because there's nothing they could do and the next morning under those weakening conditions, they didn't give the blood transfusion in them days, you know, so they, they operated on me. And they gave me ether. And when I, oh, the old ether, I guess you remember, it's the old anesthetic. And under that ether, 
When I came out, I was coming out of the ether after eight hours. They had to give me so much they thought I couldn't, I wouldn't wake up. They couldn't get me awake. I remember Mrs. Roder stood by me out there in the hospital. I'll never forget that woman. No matter what ever happens, I can never forget her. She's just a young woman, and her husband was the superintendent the, down here at the car works. And um, I, I remember she standing by me, her and Mrs. Stewart. And they was the one, actually, that paid my hospital bill. I, we didn't even have food to eat in the house, so how could we pay a hospital bill of hundreds of dollars? But she, through her church society and the Klu Kluck Klan, paid the hospital bill for me. Masons. I can never forget them. No matter what they do or what, I still, <laughs> there's something that stays with me, see, what they did for me. And they paid the bill to Dr. Reeder. He's still living. Visit your poor Fulton could tell you the story. When I come out from under that ether, there's something happened to me there. I've always believed it to be a vision. Because I was so weak, and I, they thought I was dying. She was crying. When I opened my eyes to look, I could hear her talking. And then I went back to sleep and woke up two or three times. And then I had a vision then. And then I had about... Seven months later, I had to go and have shotgun wads and greasy hunting clothes taken out of my legs. The doctor didn't get it. And so I had blood poison. Both legs had swelled up and doubled back under me. They won't take both legs off at my hips. And I just, I said, no, just come higher and take it off up here. I just couldn't stand it. See? And so finally, Dr. Reeder and Dr. Pirtle from Louisville performed the operation and cut down in there and taken it out. And today I got wonderful legs by the grace of God. Uh, but on the, the last vision that I had, the first vision when I come to, and then I went into this trance, and I thought I was in hell. Right. Just this plain. Uh -huh. uh, all right. Somebody lay your hands on her, and she'll uh, probably get her to the air. Uh, Everyone who's standing there, lay your hands on her. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus. May our sister who is sick this morning and she's fainted in the room, may thy grace and strength and power, these hands laid upon her now, representing you. And the scripture has said, These signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. And now may our sister uh, come out of this sickness and be made well for the glory of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask it and commit her to you. Amen. Amen. Now, get her to the air. It's, it's awful stuffy. I can feel it here real, real bad. It's just fainty feeling in, in, here in the platform. I've felt it four or five times here. If, as soon as she gets a feeling a little better, well, get her to where she can get to the air. That's good. Uh -huh. See, it's just so awful stuffy. You know, human beings create, uh, each one of us, so many square feet of just uh, a sickness. Yeah, somebody has some water there or something to put on the sister. She's, she's too all right now. So, yeah. All right. yeah, maybe if you could open up the doors, maybe, or give just a little bit of air as much as we possibly can in some way. See. Now, in this time, as I had this uh, vision and thinking that I, I had passed from this life into torment, and seven months later, here at the Clark County Memorial Hospital, I had the second operation. And at that time, when I come out, I thought I was standing out in the west. I had another vision. And there was a great golden cross in the skies and the glory of the Lord flowing off of that cross. And I stood with my hands out like this, and that glory was falling into my chest. And I, the vision left me. My father was sitting there looking at me when the vision came. I've always felt, you, uh, all people who know me all these years knows I've always wanted to go west. You know how it is. It's always been something to the west. But because an astronomer told me one time the same thing, that I should go west, uh, the stars when they cross their cycles and so forth, I was born under that sign, and I'd never be a success in the east. I'd have to go west. And last year, I took off west uh, to fulfill what a lifetime's desire has been, see, to, to do it. While I'm there, it's the most ridiculous thing, sitting out there in a the desert, paying $110 a month rent, and here's a house sitting up here, a parsonage furnished to me. See? But it's following the Lord. See, that, that's all I know to do. And you know the visions and what has taken place out there. Now, now in this, 
I want to say to it now, if our sister is, feels a little weak, Brother Roy, and she want to get her out somewhere, set her in a room over here where she get more air or something, and that's perfectly all right, because um, I feel that she'll be all right. Amen. So it's, it's okay. She's just faint. He's sick. And um, so um, uh, I'd, I tell you, uh, if, she, if you want to bring her over here where the air, uh, raise these windows, Brother Roy, and the sister wants to come through, that, that'll that be fine. See, if she wants to, to come over here with this, don't fear that. I want to lay hands on her when she passes by. Amen. Amen. Y'all excuse me just a minute. And God forgive me. That's, that's right. Amen. Y'all excuse me just a minute. Y'all excuse me just a minute. Y'all excuse me just a minute. Y'all excuse me daughter here sat here this morning and she's come to hear the message and got Satan's trying to beat her from it but he can't say uh, in the name of Jesus Christ uh, Lord. 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 Oh, you talk about stuffy. You ought to get in some of these places overseas where they're just piling on top of another leprosy and cancer. And, oh, my, you can't hardly get your breath, you know, and things like that. Laying them great big buildings just contaminated with, with diseases. And you know what leprosy would be? They're laying there with no ears and half their face eat off and no arms and little pegs for feet and things like that. Laying piled on one another. Many of them dying right then, laying out there from piling on one another, trying to get in somewhere, you know, to hear the message. And um, now... Now, in this, i tell you what happened. In the vision that I had, I'll go back, because I brought that the two visions in to show you about one of them. I was to be out west. I've always longed for that. And now, the purpose of the message this morning is to post the church and everything that he'll let me post the church to, as far as I know, until the uh, uh, as I go along. And this struck me, so I wanted to post the church. Now, this is to this tabernacle only. See, to hear. Now, and in this vision, the first one, here's what taking place. After the vision struck me and I was so weak, and I lost all that blood, and once I thought I was sinking into an endless eternity. Many of you have heard me tell this before. And, and sinking into an endless eternity. First I was going through like clouds and then through darkness and sinking on down, down, down. And the first thing you know, I got into the regions of the lost. And in there, I, I, I screamed. And I looked, and there just everything, there was no foundation to it. I could never stop falling. For eternity, it looked like I was going to fall. There's no stopping nowhere. And then... What a difference it was from the vision I had here not long ago of being in glory with the people. The contrast. But in this as I was falling, I finally, I, I screamed for my daddy. Of course, being just a kid, that's what I would do. I screamed for my daddy. And my daddy wasn't there. And I screamed for my mother. Somebody catch me. There was no mother there. I was just going. And I screamed then to God. There was no God there. There was nothing there. And after a while, I heard the most mournful sound that I ever heard. And it was the office feeling there's no way even a literal burning fire would be a pleasure to the sight of what this was. Now, those visions has never been wrong. And it was just one of the most horrible feelings I ever had. And what did I heard a noise sound like some kind of a, a, a haunted affair. And when it was, I looked coming, and it was women. And they had green stuff. Yes, you just see their face. And they had green stuff under their eyes, and their eyes looked like run back, like a, the women today paint their eyes run back like that, and just their eyes and face, and they were going, oh, 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 oh. Oh, my, I just screamed out. Oh, God, have mercy upon me. Have mercy, oh, God, where are you? If you'll only let me go back and live, I promise you to be a good boy. Now, that's the only thing I could say. Now, God knows, and at the day of judgment, He'll judge me for that statement. That's what I said. Lord, God, let me go back and I promise you I'll be a good boy. And when I got shot, I had told lies. I had 
done pretty near everything there was to be done, only one thing that I say, I might as well just clean it out while I'm right here now. And when I looked down and seen I was half blowed in two almost, I said, God, have mercy on me. You know, I never did commit adultery. That's the only thing that I could say to God. I never accepted his pardon and all these things. I just say, could say I never did commit adultery. And then they've taken me out there. And then in that I cried, God, be merciful to me. I'll be a good boy if you'll only let me go back. For I knew there was a God somewhere. And so help me, those wearied creatures all around, I'd just been a new arrival. And the most hideous, horrible, ungodly feeling in that uh, look like great big eyes, the big eyelashes out like that, and run back like a cat. Like back like this, and green stuff, and like it cankered or something. And they were, they were going, oh, oh, oh. oh, what a feeling. Now when I, then in a moment's time, I'd come back to natural life again. That thing has bothered me. I thought, oh, let it be that I'll never go to a place like that. No other human being will ever have to go to a place like that. Seven months later, I had the vision of standing in the West and seeing that gold cross coming down upon me. And I, I knew that there was a regions of the damned somewhere. Now, I never noticed it too much until about four weeks ago. The wife never thought of it in this terms. About four weeks ago, the wife and I went down to Tucson to do some shopping. And while we were setting the wife, we went in downstairs and, and there was a bunch of sissy-like boys had their hair red, you know, like the women does, and, and bangs combed down here in front and these real high trousers on, kind of, I guess the beat necks or what you call them. And they were in there and everybody's looking at them and their heads is that big like the women that wears these here, a water head haircuts, you know. And they were down there and a young woman come by and she said, what do you think about that? I said, then you ought to be ashamed of yourself, if you can think that. I said, he has just as much right to do it as you do. Neither one of you have a right. So I went upstairs and I sat down. And when I did this, an escalator, it was in J.C. Penney's store, and the escalator bringing the people up. Well, I really turned sick at my stomach of seeing those women come up there, young, old, and indifferent, wrinkled, young, and every way, with little bitty shorts on, their filthy body, and those sexy, dressed women with those great big heads uh, like that, and here they come, and one coming around that escalator is coming right up like that where I was sitting back in a chair, sitting there with my head down, and I turned and looked, and one of them coming up the steps was saying Spanish speaking to another woman. She was a white woman speaking to the Spanish woman. And when I looked, all at once I was changed. There I'd seen that before. Her eyes, you know how the women are doing now, painting their eyes just recently like cat, you know, put it up like this, and wearing cat glasses and everything, you know, with eyes up like this. And that green stuff there, their eyes, there was that thing. I seen when I was a child. There was the woman, just exactly. And I just got numb all over and began to look around. And there was those people mumbling, you know, going on about the prices and things in the building. And I just looked like it. I just changed for a moment. And I looked and I thought, that's what I saw in hell. There they was, that canker. I thought because they were in hell, what made them that way had greenish blue uh, under their eyes. And here was these women painted with greenish blue, just the way that vision said about 40 years ago. Okay? Uh, about 40 years ago is what it's been. I'm 54. I was 14. So about 40 years ago, I, and that's the, the, that's the number anyhow of the judgment. You see. Now, there was, I'd seen that and I couldn't even speak to my wife when she comes. She's over there trying to get a Sarah and the kids some kind of a, a dress or something for school. And I, I, couldn't even, I couldn't even speak to her. She said, Bill, what's the matter with you? I said, honey, I'm, a, I'm almost a dead man. And she said, what's the matter? Are you sick? I said, no. Something's just happened. Now, she don't know 
She's waiting for this tape to return. I've never said it to nobody. And I thought I'd wait, as I promised, bring it to the church first. Huh? Bring it to the church. And that's my promise. And you'll realize after tonight, reason I try to keep my promise. And I thought then, as I noticed them cankered looking eyes on them women. There were the Spanish, the French, and Indian, and white, and all together. But that great big heads, you know, bushed up with that combs where they comb it back, way big, and then comes out, you know, you know how they do it, fix it in the, uh, like they do it. And then them cankered looking eyes, and the eyes with the paint, that run back like a cat's eye. And them talking, and there I was again, standing there at J.C. Penney's store, Back in hell again. I, I, I got so scared. I thought, Lord, surely I haven't died and you've let me come to this place after all. And there they were making just ground like at a, in that vision, like you could just barely hear it with your ears, you know, just the mumble and going on people. And then women coming up that escalator and walking around there. And like, ooh, ooh. There's them green and funny looking eyes. Mournful. Wife come up and I said, just let me alone a minute, honey. I said, if you don't mind, I, I want to go home. And she said, are you sick? I said, no. Just go ahead, honey, if you've got any shopping to do. She said, no, I'm finished. And I said, let me take you about an hour. See? I walked out. She said, what's the matter? I said, meaty. I, 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 something happened up there. And while I was under that, I thought this. What day are we living in? Could this be the third pull? Now I've got some notes here. Jesus, we find out that Jesus and His ministry, after He had preached to the people, now we're going to be real scriptural on this, after Jesus had finished His ministry and His ministry was rejected by the people, now, you'll read between the lines. Draw your own conception. Remember what I told you at the first. After he had preached, he come as a promised one for that day. We all know that. The Scriptures identified Jesus Christ as Messiah. That's right. Thoroughly, firmly vindicated by God and His Word that He was Messiah. There's no question. Does anybody question it? If you do, then you come to the altar that he wasn't the Messiah. He was clearly identified as a Messiah. But after he clearly, uh, God identified him, as Peter said on the day of Pentecost, uh, you know, uh, when he talked to the Sanhedrin there at four, about four days later, he said, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by signs and wonders which God did by him in the midst of which we all are witnesses. See? You have, talking by wicked hands, and have crucified the Prince of Life which God has raised up and shown forth these things that you see. see? Christ lived on, of course, still is today. Now, after Jesus had clearly came, identified himself, God identified him and he prophesied and after the days of his prophecy though scripturally identified the people rejected him. That's right. And um, he preached then after they rejected him here the ones that had a possibility of being saved. Remember when he was preaching there was a possibility of anybody being saved. We don't know who they are. They're predestinated. But he continually preached. But after the days of his preaching, his ministry continued on because the last group he preached to was the souls that were in hell that could not be forgiven. I've clearly read that from the Bible here from Second Peter. He went and preached to souls that were in prison which is hell, locked up until the day of the judgment. Because, you see, the judgment isn't now. And there's no burning hell now. Somebody tell you the guy's in burning hell now, that's wrong. See, a judge of this earth is just enough to never condemn a man until he's brought to trial. And God will never throw a man into the 
a fiery furnace until first he is condemned by God's own laws. He rejected mercy. So you see, he first has to have a trial, and the trial is a great white throne judgment. But now he's in a place called a prison house. As I saw the vision of both places, have by the grace of God, I say this not to be sacrilegious, and if it's wrong, God forgive me, I believe I've been in both places. In both places. And I've seen the redeemed, the blessed, and I've seen the lost and where they were at. And that's why I stand as your brother today to warn you to flee from that downward path. Don't you never go that road. And you've got everything to live for that blessed upward way where the redeemed are in joy and peace and they can't sin, they can't, can't be sorry, they can't, there's nothing there perfect. Seeing both places. I know that's an awful statement for a person to make, but God being my judge, I solemnly believe I've seen both places. I, I believe that. And oh, far be it from any person ever entering that regions of the lost. If you were standing with hot wires bored to you, tormented in every way, it'd be not like that devil torment there is in that place. There could be nothing. Could, human mind couldn't... The human mind couldn't comprehend what that regions of the lost is. There's no way to explain it. And there's no way to explain what the regions of the blessed is. It's so great. That's so horrible and this is so, so great. It's from the ridiculous to the sublime. So if anybody hears me, and I'm getting to be an old man. I don't know how much longer I got. I'll soon be 55 years old. And I, I don't know, according to nature, I may not have too many years. I don't know where this tape will go. But let everyone here, here into a tape or wherever it may go, don't never go towards that regions of the lost. You can't picture hell being that bad. And whatever you do, don't you never get any, uh, forget this, that the regions of the blessed, I would say this, with St. Paul, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, or either could it enter the heart of man what God has for them in store, that loving. So stop if you're listening to the tape, turn the machine off, and repent if you're not saved. And get right with God. Uh, saying this by first-hand experience, as I believe in my heart, and I say, if, these, if the visions has deceived me, God be merciful for me to make a statement like that, but with the sincerity in my heart, knowing that not one of them visions ever failed, I believe that I have been in both places. Far be it from any human being going that road downward. Now, Jesus, after He had finished His ministry, preached to those souls that were unsavable, that could not ever be saved. Now, the Bible tells us that. He went and preached to the souls that were in prison that repented not. When mercy was given to them, they spurned mercy, and now they're waiting for the judgment. Oh, what a time that must have been. Oh, I wish there was some way I could shake the world with that to let them see what the reality is. And Jesus said Himself, As the Father sent Me, so send I you. And as the Father sent Him to preach to the, uh, the living, to those who had hope, and then pre present the same message to those who had no hope, it seems to fitting at this time that that will have to be done. Because the Spirit of Christ living in us does not change the nature of Him or doesn't change God's system. He must be the same in every generation. He must be the same. He said, As the Father sent me, so send I you. The ministries must be the same. In so much that He said, I see some of you writing Scriptures down, St. John 14, 12, He that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also. See? The works, preaching to the lost, healing the sick, and then to the impossible to ever be saved. See? The work 
went on just the same. So this has uh, been, has this been, may I put it like this, the ministry of Jesus Christ reincarnated in His church in this last day. That's what many of us believe. I believe with you. I believe this. If I didn't believe it, I'd do something else about it because after all, this is me that is con is concerned in here. And if the Spirit of God be in you, you're concerned about the people. There was a scripture that always puzzled me how that Moses could tell God a better idea than God had. Well, I found out that it was the Spirit of Christ in Moses. See? God said, Moses, separate yourself from him. I'll destroy the whole thing and start with you. He said, Lord. He threw himself in the breach and said, Take me. Blot out my name. Well, these very people that had rebelled, his heart went for them. See? And when a minister that's got the people on his heart, how could I ever feel justified to my before God and to myself to ever hold anything back from a people that you love better than you love yourself? How could a man take a person into the church by a hand joint or some sprinkler, some false baptism or something, and let him lay under the, the influence of a lie and know that Bible lays there and say he loves a person? Amen. Though I have to beg for my living, Amen. whatever it is, Amen. let me be honest with God Amen. and the people Amen. to tell Amen. them the truth. Hallelujah. Never let me be a deceiver. How can I deceive yeah. who I love? Amen. Though I have to hurt them, yet I love them. Amen. That's the reason you spank your child. is because you love him. Not because you don't like him, because you love him. If he's wrong, he'll get killed if you don't correct him. Now, so has the ministry been as it was? So how is it today? It has been preached and thoroughly vindicated by the Word of God. That it couldn't be man, it has to be God. It has to be. Notice. The same spiritual signs that Jesus done has reoccurred on the earth in the last days. The very same spiritual sign Amen. that He identified Himself as Messiah has identified Him today. He's still Messiah. Amen. The same material signs has appeared on the earth that appeared by He what He was. Same pillar of fire that St. Paul saw. Same one, all that has reoccurred with the same nature in it, doing the same thing. Amen. Jesus claimed that He's done nothing until the Father showed Him, and the Father is the Holy Spirit. We realize that. It's just the office of God. Amen. If it isn't, then which one of them is the Father of Jesus Christ? Jesus said God was His Father, and the Bible said the Holy Ghost was His Father. Now, you can't make Him be an illegitimate child. So the Holy Ghost is God. So with Jesus, God. So God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is, is the, that's three offices of one God. It's three attributes, the same God. You're a part of God, and I'm a part of God. See? But I'm not all of God, neither are you all of God. See? See? It's attributes of God upon us as sons adopted by Jesus Christ, which God Himself become flesh to die for us. Now, the Holy Spirit always showed Him things to come. And he never was wrong. It was always perfect. Is that right? He did not take credit to himself. He gave credit to God. He said the Son can do nothing in himself but what he sees the Father doing. That in the Father, the Holy Spirit was his Father. Is that right? Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take in thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost which was his father. And the Holy Ghost showed Jesus things to come. Yeah. Told him things it was, and he was the God prophet. Because the word of the Lord only comes to the prophet. Showing that the words came in minor form. The prophets wrote what the Lord told them, but he wrote nothing because he was the word. Yeah. He was the word. 
Notice, the same Holy Spirit that lived in him, yet a little while in the world will see me no more, yet ye shall see me, because I will be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. I will come to you, he said. I was the Father that was in him, that will come to you. And he said, when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, he will reveal these things that I've taught you and will show you things to come. Amen. There you are. Now, now we notice that as the Holy Spirit worked in the church then, so has the Holy Spirit done exactly the same things today. Announcing by the pillar of fire just exactly was at the beginning the same thing. And seeing this come upon uh, Jesus, John announced it at the river of Jordan. And has proved everything, even scientific pictures of it. It can't be disputed. It was scientifically, it was material. It wasn't a mythical thought. It wasn't psychology. Uh, George J. Lacey said, The mechanical eye of the camera won't take psychology. The light struck the lens. And what about you, church, that about six or eight months ago, here in Stan, you're saying, it's thus saith the Lord, that I'm going to Tucson, Arizona, there'll be a blast, and seven angels will appear. You remember? Not even God making it so real until the Look magazine took the pictures of it. Spiritual foresaw, materialized just exactly the same. The seven angels which brought forth the winding up of all the scriptures because all the mysteries of the entire Bible lays in the seven seals. We know that. That is the, the book. It's sealed with that even now. It's a mystery of the entire book laid in those seven seals that the Lord let us bring. And there's man sitting here today was right there present with me when it happened. Look Magazine proved the same thing that it, was, it actually happened. Because it was... God that told it. It was God that stands behind His Word to perform it when He says He'll do it. Therefore, it's not some man, carnal person like myself that's among you people. It's the eternal God. He uses man. That's true. He does nothing outside of what He does but man. We realize that. That's His, that's his agent. That's what he chose. Why? I don't know. He could make the sun to preach the gospel. He could make the wind to preach the gospel. He could make the wind to do things. But he chose man. That was his idea. That human would speak back to a human, not himself. But the word of the Lord came to the prophets, the prophesiers, the preachers. And a prophesier that denies the original word, how can he be a true prophet? He can't be because he's denying the truth of the Word. And then if it doesn't, then this Word itself is just preached by the trueness of the Word and by the trueness of the Holy Spirit, it'll manifest every promise that it promised. That's how we know whether it's right or not. That's what Jesus said. If I do not that which is written of me to do, then don't believe me. See? Now, we see these things. Remember, the seven seals is finished. And when those seven revealed truths, one of them, he wouldn't permit us to know. You, how many was here at the seven seals? Amen. It's for all of you again. See, the, the seventh seal, he wouldn't permit it. He stood right there in the room and revealed every one of them. And if I ever preached anything in my life was inspired, it was that. And it ought to be true to you. Stand here and tell you that it's going to happen and go right there and even science and everything else, the scientific research and everything, mystery to the people, prove that it happened right there. Amen. And come right back and hear it unfold and make every word exactly right. Amen. What day are we living? Where are we at? And you remember, in that sixth seal, where all seven trumpets sounds under that sixth seal, when we get to that, you'll see that. Every seven trumpet took place in that sixth seal. The seven's always a mystery. Watch that seven. That's the finish. That was the coming of the Lord. Heaven was quite silent. Nobody moved. Because Jesus said himself, Not even an angel of heaven knows when I will return. I don't even know it myself. 
What time the Father has put that in his mind? God alone knows it. The Spirit. But I didn't know it. And it wasn't revealed when that seventh trumpet sounded or the seventh angel, um, a seal was opened. Then there was silence in the heaven. See? It wasn't give away what would take place. But under the sixth seal, where these trumpets open, remember, under there we find out that the Lamb came forth, appeared on the scene. He had left the mercy seat. His work of redemption was finished. And he came forth and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat up on the throne. And time was no more. And immediately an angel appeared in the seventh chapter, or tenth chapter, and seventh verse, saying, This angel come down and swore that time was no longer. But you see, in this book was what was redeemed. It was a book of redemption. And everything that he had redeemed was written in that book. All that he died for was written in the book, and he could not leave his minatorial seat until he had thoroughly redeemed, and he couldn't redeem it at the cross because he were predestinated in the Lamb's book of life, and he had to stay on there to make intercessions until that last person was finished. Glory! But one day he rose from there. Come forth. Where was the book at? It was still in the abstract owner. God Almighty. And John looked around and he wept because there was no man even worthy to look on the book. And it was especially open the seals to reveal what the hidden mystery was. The mysteries was in the seven seals. When these seven seals was opened, that opened up the entire Bible. The seven seals. It was sealed with seven mysteries. And in these seven seals held the entire mystery of it. And it was a book of redemption. New Testament. Not the old. It only proclaimed for the New Testament. They have been made, cannot be made perfect without us. Hebrews 11. See. see now the redemption only come when the Redeemer die. And they were potentially under the blood of lambs. Not the Redeemer had been redeemed yet until the Redeemer came. Notice. Now, when this Redeemer... John looked around, and here sat God on the throne with the book in his hand that had been sealed with seven seals, and the whole plan of redemption was in it and had been lost by the human race, Adam. And God, it went back where Satan couldn't take it. He just caused him to lose it. But where did the book go to then? It didn't belong to the human race. The blessings didn't belong to the human race that lost it. So it went right on back to its original owner. That was God. There he sat with it. And he called for some man, somebody, to come and claim it. John looked around, and there was no man in heaven. No man on earth. Nobody, no angel, nothing could take the book or to loose the seals or even to look on it. No man was worthy. John said he wept bitterly. And then an angel come to him, said, Weep not, John, for the line of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. And he's worthy. And John looked to see a lamb, or see a lion, and what did he find? A lamb. And it was a bloody lamb. A lamb that had been slain. How long since the foundation of the world? The Lamb came forth, walked up to him that had the book in his right hand, and received the book. Climbed up on the throne and sat down. Hallelujah. That's it. It was over. When? When the seals was revealed. When the last one, it was everything that he had redeemed, there was nothing he come to redeem. Say, why didn't he redeem him 40 years ago, 2,000 years ago? See, their names are on the book of life, in that book. And he had to stand here because it was God's purpose to redeem them. Their names were put on the Lamb's book of life before the foundation of the world. The Lamb was put there with it to be slain. Here come the Lamb and was slain, come back to make intercessions. Watching, there'd be a lot of impersonation, a lot of everything else, but there was really somebody was going to be saved. For he, the church, was predestinated to Amen. Amen. Without spot or wrinkle, she's going to be there, and the Lamb died for that purpose. 
And then when the last name on that book was redeemed, the Lamb came forth and took the book. I'm the one that did it. The angels, the cherubims, the four and twenty elders, the beasts, everything uncrowned themselves, fell down before the throne and said, Worthy art thou. John said everything in heaven and earth. Heard me hard, amen. Screaming. Hallelujah and praises to God. The scream went up. Why? Their names were in that book to be revealed. And the Lamb had revealed it. The Lamb had redeemed it. But He could not come forth until every name was revealed. And that was taking place under the sixth seal before the seventh broke. Then the, spies, then the Lamb come for his what he had redeemed. He come to claim what he had redeemed. He's already got it right here in the book. Take it from his hand. Now he's coming to receive what he has redeemed. That's his work he's done. He's come to receive it. Oh, what a, what a time. It's proven it. The seventh seal proved it. Come back and took the book of redemption. Notice. It was to be the seventh angel's message that was to reveal the seventh the seven seals. Revelations 10, 7. Now, you'll find it. See? And he saw this angel come down, put his foot on the land and on the sea. That was Christ. Had a rainbow over his head. Notice him. you find him in Revelations 1 again with the rainbow over his head. Look up on to Jasper and Sardis and so on. Here he come, put one hand, one foot up on the land, one up on the water, raised up his hand. He had a rainbow over his head. Yet, that's a covenant. He was a covenant angel, which was Christ. Made a little lower than the angels to suffer. There he come and put his hands up to heaven and swore by him that lives forever and ever, the eternal one, the Father, God, that time shall be no more. When this takes place. It's run out. Amen. It's done. It's finished. And then the scripture says, and at, at the message of the seventh earthly angel, the messenger on earth, the seventh and last church age, at the beginning of his ministry, when he starts off into the earth at that time, the mystery of God of these seven seals should be made known by that time. Amen. Now we see where we're at. Amen. Could it be, friend? Could it be? Notice, all possible. All that had been redeemed in the book, he come forth for redemption. All that was to be redeemed was in the book. Predestinated before the foundation of the world, he come to redeem it. All he had redeemed was written therein. I want to ask you a question now. And you people on tape, listen close. Them hideous eyes, that hideous head, could that be why that this message has been so against women of modern age? Could this be that last angel's message? What did he say down there to the river about 33 years ago as John was sent forth see, to announce the first coming of Christ? Your message will announce the second coming around the world. And that's what it's done. Then the coming must be at hand. Watch what happens now. Why? I've scratched my hand. I've wallowed on my pillow. I've walked the floor. What's the matter with you? A few days ago, I asked two men I was riding with. I asked Jack Moore one time. And Molly, you know, Brother Jack Moore, I'm going to him in Shreveport. I said, Brother Jack, you've been as close to friend as I've had on earth. And before I asked him, I asked my wife. If anybody knows anything about me, my bads and, and all, is my wife. See? A dear person. And I said to her one day, I said, Honey, as your husband, I'm a minister of the gospel. I don't want to bring any reproach upon the one that I love. No, I don't want to hurt you. I wouldn't bring any reproach on you. God forbid that I ever do anything that would harm you. And how much more anything that would harm God? How much I love Him. You're my wife. He's my Savior and God. I want to ask you a question. Don't pull no punch. Tell me the truth. I said, have I studied so much? And I have wondered, I'm, I'm a makeup of funny, odd. I know that. 
Everybody says, what kind of a person? Well, uh, see, you can't make yourself. You are what you are by the grace of God. And I, I, I said, have I uh, lost my mind just a little bit, you know, and, and kind of gone? I said, why am I condemning those women constantly when I love them? They call, I said, that's a woman hater. I just don't hate, I just hate women. That's wrong. I love women. I mean, it's my sisters. I ain't going to pat you on the back saying you're wrong. I tell you that. I love you too much for that. Some man to do that, it's a different kind of love. Amen. I love you because I love what you are. You're a helpmate to a son of God and you're part of him. Now, I love you because it, that you were made in the image of man and man is made in the image of God so therefore together you're one in Christ. That's why I love you. Any other thing is nothing to it. God knows that all my life. That's right. I love you. Why would I stand up and constantly when they say, tell all the women when if you're going to come to your brother Brand preach, comb their hair different. Put on a hat or something there because he'll start blasting away about short hair and you're, don't wear any makeup and so forth. That's what they did. All he talked about, somebody said, why don't you, said people believe you'd be a prophet. Why don't you teach the women how to receive great spiritual gifts and things like that instead of trying to teach them such stuff as that? I said, if they won't learn their ABCs, how will they know algebra? Amen. Amen. Get right first. And more I preach, the worse it gets. Then you say, why don't you quit? No, sir, there's got to be a box of witness against them. Amen. One of the greatest men in the ministry, day laid his hands on me not long ago and said, I'm going to pray for you, Brother Bram, if you'll let me do it. That God will take that out of your heart. So leave them women alone in those things. Now I said, well, I said, do you believe in that, sir, your holiness preacher? He said, certainly I don't believe it. But so that's, that's up to us. I said, no. He said, that's up to the pastors. I said, they're not doing it. Amen. Somebody's got to do it. Amen. The river's got to be crossed. Amen. Amen. The skin's got to be shucked off. I don't want to do it. God knows I don't want to do it. Many of them women feed my children. And they lay their life down for me almost. You think in the grace of God shed abroad by the Holy Ghost, you think I could stand still and see that poor person go plunge out yonder into eternity without hope if I don't scream out against it? Not to be a smart aleck, but the spirit of this nation. The spirit of the church, not the spirit of Christ now, the spirit of the church denomination has swung these women out into that mess out in her. And I'm only a voice crying, get out of it! Flee from that filth! Amen. Don't let the devil do a thing like that to you. It's wrong! And you assemblies of God, let them women, let them women bob their hair but forbid them to wear makeup. There's really not a scripture against makeup, but there is against bobbing your hair. Amen. She ain't even fit to pray before God, the Bible says. Amen. Her husband has the right to give her divorce and leave her. Amen. Right. She represents herself to the world as an impure woman. The Bible said so. She dishonors her own husband when she does it. That's exactly what the Bible said. Amen. But a woman wearing makeup, we find a woman did it in the Bible only once. It's Jezebel. That's who it was. The only person in the Bible that ever wore makeup was Jezebel. And God immediately fed her to the, the wild dogs. She's become a disgrace and even her everything. Everything is mean is called Jezebel. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do it. What makes you do it then? The spirit of the devil. You don't realize it. I know you don't. You're, you're too good a people. You're good. You shake my hand, talk to me, and I love you. That's right. But if I see that, wouldn't I be a hypocrite? Amen. Amen. Paul said, I'm not shunned to declare you the whole counsel of God. May no woman's blood be upon me at that day. For no man, I've told you the truth. I've hated to do it. Not hating because I don't want to do what God tells me to, but I love you. I don't want to hurt you, so what am I going to do? But pure divine love will drive you to do it. Amen. Jesus even prayed to dodge the cross. Is it possible that the cup should pass it? Nevertheless, not my will, thine. Am I going to have to be the feller says this? Am I going to have to take them precious women that's so nice and everything and just shuck them to pieces? 
Am I going to have to? Am I going to take my minister brothers and stand there and tell them that they love money and the, the denomination better than they love God? Me to my precious brothers and put their arm. Oh, do I have to do that? Oh, God, don't let me do it. But I've not shunned to declare to you the whole council. Amen. It's genuine love that's going over to it. Is that why this message has been this way? Nowhere else in the world, is it? Amen. Where's it at? Amen. All right. They're afraid. Amen. But it's been fearless. Exactly. Amen. God is always that way, see. All right. Is this why women has been so rebuked by this message? Not knowing it wasn't revealed. It showed me, but it didn't come to me until just the other day. Look at there. All right. Sure fits the ministry. Amen. Now, wait a minute. Was there ever a time that it become a woman's world before? Yeah. According to history, in the days of Elijah, there's a woman named Jezebel. Amen. And she got rulership over the church of God, which the Bible says she will again in the last days. Her spirit. Through a church, an organization. And she'll be a whore and all the other churches with her will be prostitutes. Just like she is. Is that right? Amen. Hallelujah. Revelation 17. Said she is a whore and she's a mother of harlots. Amen. That can't be man. That's women. Amen. And they were all thrown alive into the lake of fire Amen. and consumed. Is that true? Amen. There you are. Notice. When that Jezebel rose on the scene, there was a man rose up against it. God brought a man. We don't even know where he come from. Amen. He had no background of ministry. He never was no priest or nothing. He come forth an old rugged woodsman by the name of Elijah. And he laid the axe to the root of the tree. And they hated him. Not only that, but his whole congregation hated him. And one time he thought he stood alone. He said, no, I got 7,000. He said, it's right with you. That was that elected group, see. It's always that group. So don't fear Elijah. I know you think you're run out because the denomination is running up there on top of the hill. But said, so I got 7,000. That believe the same thing you're preaching. <laughs> I got him. Then after his day, Rome took over. And that become a time as a woman's world again. All the fashions of, of the women. How they come out in their bonnets and things. To, and God raised up another one. With the same spirit only. The spirit of Elijah. Is that right? And he said, the axe is laid to the root of the tree. <laughs> and there was a little old feisty woman in there, married her, left her husband, married his brother, Herod, Herodia. And she was a, a painted up clown of that day. Danced. She taught her girl how to dance. She had a daughter. By her foster father, the, the fa foster father, uh, by the father, his brother, Herodia. That was the daughter of, of, of the woman. And then she taught her to dance, and she became a real striptease dancer. Yeah. After her mother. And she thought she could marry four or five times to anything she wanted to. Here come Herod out. They were all Jews, I remember. They were church people. Here come Herod out in his church to hear this prophet that the people believe was a prophet. He walked right straight into the, both their faces and said, it's not lawful for you to have her. Amen. And did that make her blow up? Yeah. <laughs> now, some ordinary man would say, how do you do, Herodia? We're sure glad to have you in our congregation today. Yeah. But not John! Amen. Jesus said, who did you go to see? When he went out to see John, did you go to see one that's all dressed up like a priest? No, that can't. That kind kisses a baby and buries it in. He said, "What did you go to see? A wind, a reed to shake a manny wind?" They say, "Come over here, John. We'll pay you more if you preach to us, and we, we're the biggest organization." Not John. Amen. No, he never went to see that. Amen. So, what did you go to see then when you went to hear and see John, a prophet? He said, "And I say to you, more than a prophet." Amen. You can receive it. This is he who the prophet spoke of was coming. I'll send my messenger before my face and he'll prepare the way for the Lord. Amen. He was a messenger of the covenant. Amen. He said, there's not been a man that's born of a woman. 
one as great as he is. Hallelujah. See, that's the kind of a man that God raised up for that day. Elijah, a backwoodsman. John, the same thing. See? The spirit of Elijah was up on John. And he says, when it comes a woman's day again, that spirit will rise again. Amen. Before the coming of the Lord, when the earth will be burnt and the righteous will walk out upon the, the ashes of the wicked like ashes under their feet. He promised it again. Amen. In these days. Notice, the Holy Spirit promised that. It's a fitting to the time that we're living in. There must be someone rise up that's got to come. For it's thus saith the Lord. Malachi, the fourth chapter. That's exactly what he said would be the sign just before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. I'll send you Elijah. And what will he do? Turn the hearts of the children back to the doctrine of the fathers. Amen. Back to the Bible, all these denominational differences. And come back to the Bible, back to God. That's what he would do. Notice what a great time we're living in. Them prophets rebuked them modern women of their days. And they both paid for it by their life. History proves that each one of those times was a woman's world when women controlled. Look about today. We'll have one president one of these days. Look like it happened right now. Actually, she is president. <laughs> He's just a figure. Here not long ago in one of the other nations, she was getting so much praise and everything from all the people till the president himself said, I'm her husband. The president of the United States. She sets the fashions and women follow her. See? Just like Jezebel did. You heard my sermon on Jezebel religion. Yeah. You know about it. You see where we're at now? You see what happened here a week or two ago here in the city? The faith Lutheran minister invited the Catholic preacher of the Sacred Heart to come up and preach for him, and he did, and the faith Lutheran minister went out to the Catholic priest and preached for him. Uh. The Council of Churches over there now, it's meeting in Rome. This circular letter that my good friend David Duplices, when I sat there and cried to him about it in 14 Mile Creek not long ago, not realize he swung the church right into Babylon. When everybody's saying, oh, the, all the churches is going to be one now. Yeah, I know that. See? Just exactly what's wrote on my book of prophecy in 1933 that would take place. Amen. Why don't you realize that Satan? Amen. Uniting together? Sure. The Bible says that. Right. Amen. Just after a bit, just a little while, as soon as they become one, then the interdenominational is finished. Yeah. There will be your mark of the beast right. See? Just, I ain't got time to go on this, but nearly quarter to twelve. I want to finish this up. Get this point. I'm just laying these scriptures in here where you can see the possibility of where we're at. Now we'll close just a few minutes. Now notice just what's taking place. The, the prophets rebuked those women in them days and was called woman haters. That's right. History proves it was so. Now wait just a minute. You're writing down scriptures. You're going to put down 1 Timothy 5, 6. The Bible said the woman that lives in, in worldly pleasure can't be the pleasures of God. So it happens. See? The woman that lives in worldly pleasure is dead while she is living. That's what the prophet said. St. Paul. The woman that lives in this worldly condition is dead while she is living. And if she rejects mercy, she can cross the separating line where there's no place for her no more. And then where she at? With her painted eye. Her cut hair. And she's across the line with no way to come back and there's got to be a ministry preached to her. But remember, at that time, it's all over. Oh, amen. It's done. It's just a haunting. There'll be a ministry that'll show great wonders. Joel said so. But there'll be no time for redemption. It's all over. The Lamb's done took his book and his redeemed is over. As Jesus first preached and was rejected and then went and haunted those that were in there. 
preach to them that were in prison and could not repent, no time for salvation, that same ministry will have to repeat again. What if that could be the third group? To the eternal lost. What if it is there? I hope it's not. What if it is? Think of it just a minute now. What if it is? God forbid. I got children. But it sure looks pretty close here. Why did that vision come when I was a kid? Why did I never think of it before? Why did that trance come there in the room the other day? So here it is. It's right in the midst of the, the, the souls lost. And Jesus preached to them, witness. But they, they never repented. And more I preach, the worse they get. There's no repentance. No place for it. The Lamb took his book when the seventh seal, just ready for it to be opened, the sixth seal. Remember, he hid the seventh seal from us. He wouldn't do it. When the angel stood day by day telling it, but then he wouldn't do it on that. So there's silence in heaven. No one knew. It was the coming of the Lord. Oh, you say it can't be. I hope it isn't. Just a, let's go just a little farther here. i got something to roll down. All right. Remember, she that liveth in worldly pleasure of the things of the world, acting like it, she could go to church and act like a saint that don't have one thing to do with it. But she's dead. Why, well, she's living. Look what the dominations has done for her. They made her a handler of the Holy Word which is contrary to the Bible. They made her a preacher. It's forbidden of the Scripture. Even makes her now become ruler, mayor, governors, everything in the country. And a minister in the house of God when she's guilty of every sin that was ever committed. She's the cause of it. Right. Now, I'm, not, I'm not speaking right. She's guilty. She's the one that caused every baby to be born blind. She's the one that caused every grave to be dug. She's the one that caused sin, sickness, sorrow. Ambulance can't ring unless a woman calls it. No crime can be done. No sin, no death, no sorrow, no suffering. But a woman done it. And God forbids her to go to pulpit to preach. <laughs> but yet they do it. Amen. Denomination. See where it's at? She's a goddess. How the devil is at work? Why, the Catholic people make them women gods pray to them. That's right. Goddess, Mary, and so forth. I see where the ecumenical council, they said that it would come to pass that they'd pray a little more to Jesus if it helped the Protestants to come in. Oh, that sugar-coated, inchangeable, they said. It's still the same old devil. The Bible said, and he caused all to receive a mark upon their forehead that didn't have their names written in the Lamb's book of life. It's the predestinated church I'm talking to. Amen. Not those out there, no, sir. Out of every group he's pulled, he's predestinated. That's what he's coming for in every age. But there she stands. There she is. That's her. Preach the Word. Handle the Word. Become a goddess and a cause of every sin. The Bible said, I suffer not a woman to teach her or serve any authority. Amen. The inobedience is also saith the, the law. See, she can't do it. But they make her a ruler of the land, mayor, governor. Soon she'll be president. Sure. There you are. That's the way, that's the way it goes, see. And people does that Amen. because they don't care about this word. They'll never see it. Look at those Jews standing there. Scholars. Fine man. Jesus said, you're of your father, the devil. What if I brought him to a trial right now before you? Let's just try it a minute. And God forgive me for taking the sides against him. But just a minute to show you something. What if you say, well, I'm glory to God. I spoke in tongues. Hallelujah. I know I, I, I got it. Bless God. Yeah. Uh huh. You did. Remember them people of Israel. The Bible said after he called the people out and saved them out of Egypt, he destroyed them because they didn't follow the message. See? They eat manna out of heaven. They eat manna that God rained on the earth for them to eat. And stood in the presence of the messenger and seen the pillar of fire and heard the voice of God and seen it confirmed. 
than because they wanted to believe Korah. They can be more holy men. They can be this, that, or the other. We got to be holy too. We got to do all this. All the people's holy. God said, separate yourself. Amen. Get away from there. Amen. Moses said, all's on the Lord's side. Come with me. Amen. Right. Amen. And he just opened up the earth and swallowed them up. Right. They were good people too. Sure they were. They were fine people. That's, but that didn't do it. Not all that says, Lord, Lord, but the one that doeth the will of my Father. Amen. Not he that starts and sees and finishes. That says, no shortcuts. You're disqualified at the end of the race. No shortcuts. You must come just the way the Scripture said. If it says, Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, there's no shortcut. Shaking hand, joining church or denomination, you come that way. Except you die to yourself and be born of the Spirit of God, you're, you're, you're lost. That's all. There's no shortcuts. You say, Well, I belong to church. I know. That's good. Uh, my mother, I, I don't doubt that. But this is you I'm talking to. You've got to come that way because there's no shortcuts. You're disqualified at the judgment. You come the one way. There's only one way. And Christ is that way. And Christ is the Word that lives in you that verifies everything that He promised in His season. Did you get that? All right. Notice. Now, some say these people are good. Sure, they don't say they're not good people. I don't say St. Cecilia and all them wasn't good women. So was my mother. But I sure don't pray to her. Certainly not. I've seen lots of good people. But they're not goddess. They're women. Man. There's only one mediator between God and man. And why? Why? What a man. A Pentecostal world man. That circular letter. That brother Duplessis. Our precious brother. He's got circular. Maybe some of you has got it. Set, yeah, you got it. In the ecumenical council. By the side of the Pope. And said it was very spiritual. That's discernment of spirit, isn't it? Oh, the Spirit of the Lord was there. Very spiritual. There you are. Why? Because it's an opportunity to unite the Protestants and that together, which we have fought for for years, and the Bible stood for and told us that would come in our... One of our greatest leaders comes right in and said, That's right. That's what we do. And the whole Protestant church is falling apart. And just exactly, if you look up there, thus saith the Lord... First the Word said it. Then the Spirit of the Lord said in 19 and 33 that told all these other things about the nations going to war and how the machines would be and everything like that said that's exactly what would happen at the end. And here it is. It's never failed. And here we see it shaping up. You remember my sermon on Jezebel religion not long ago? You remember Elisha coming down the road that morning to tell him that I preached on that? See? How I predicted then that the time would come this ecumenical council would finally become the mark of of the beast because it would unite with the beast. Amen. It's doing it. In my age, I've lived to see it. And here the Protestants by the millions fall for it. Why? That's what they're looking for. They're blind! Jesus told those Pharisees, you blind leaders of the blind. If the blind leads the blind, he said, won't they all fall in the ditch? And that's where they fall. How could I ever believe that a man that stood with me and talked with me could ever sit and make a remark like that? See, it's hid the eyes from the wise and prudent and reveal it to babes such as will learn. I know someday that's going to cost me my life. <laughs> that's right. It's going to, but here the truth is being known. <laughs> First one to die for this Holy Ghost plan was John the Baptist, but he didn't shirt. He died like a man. Then came the Lord Jesus. They crucified Him. He preached that the Spirit would save man from sin. Is that right? Then they stoned Stephen's. He preached against sin. He made them so angry. They dashed His head in. But He died in the Spirit. He gave up the ghost and went to join the others, that life-giving host. There's Peter and Paul and John the Divine. They give up their lives so the gospel could shine. What do they do? They mangle their blood with the prophets of old so the true word of God would honest be told. Amen. Souls under the altar were crying how long for the Lord to punish all that's done wrong but there's going to be more that'll give their life's blood. Yep. Try for this Holy Ghost gospel and its crimson flood. 
Uh, this keeps dripping with blood. Yes. It'll do it someday, but I'm waiting that hour when it's finished. Some sister just had a dream. She sent it to me and said, I seen him at church. Fixed the way. He's going to kill me secretly. Sometime I'm getting out of my car, going in, be fired. From... But said then the Spirit said, not at this time, but it'll come later. God forbid that I compromise on anything. I know nothing but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. We're living in a horrible day. Sin has did this. Yep. They stoned Stevens. They had John's head cut off. She did. I don't know how we'll give ours, but it'll be someday. All right. Notice. In St. John, if you want that scripture on that, St. John 6.49 is where they eat manna. And Jesus said, and they're every one dead. Say, well, my, uh, my sister, I, I seen this woman dance in the Spirit. Oh, yeah. I see him do that. I seen her speak in tongues. I see her. Yeah, Jesus said, many will come to me that day and say, I've done all these things. They eat man in the wilderness. Jesus said, and they're every one eternally separated. They're dead. That's eternally gone. They perished right there in the wilderness. You remember Hebrews, the sixth chapter. Ones that was once made known the truth and refused to walk in it. There's no more repentance for them. See? A borderline, but when the truth is presented to a person for the last time and they refuse to receive it according to the book of Hebrews, see, they will, because not even nothing in the world can ever save them. They're finished. No repentance, no redemption, there's nothing left for them. They're eternally separated. The Bible said so. Looking for the fearful fire and indignation which shall devour the adversary. And when truth of the gospel has been proven thoroughly have vindicated and then turn around and walk from it they're finished that's all it's awful but I have to tell it remember the angels which kept not their first estate but left there in that prison house in darkness where the world is walking today in that same prison there's no repentance remember a few years ago I said when I come down from Chicago either America will receive it this year or she won't receive it at all Amen. Amen. see where she's gone now, I wonder if the third pool could be. Oh, God, maybe far from it. Is that what the third pool is for? Could that be? <laughs> well, think of it, friends. Think of it. I don't like to. Jesus said this kind of hypocrisy. If you want to put that down, Matthew 23, 7. I, I got here, read that. But you can see, you blind Pharisees. Have you got just a couple minutes? Hey, Let's see. Let's yeah. just turn to that because I said read it. There was something here I want to read just before. Uh, I'll maybe cut something else out. But it, let's just get this just a minute. Matthew 23. Just a minute. All right. And we're going to begin at the 27th first. Just listen. Now, you read the whole thing when you go home, if you will. Just a few more minutes. Now, watch here. Matthew 23 and begin at the 27th verse. Woe unto you, scribes. Now, remember, this is holy man he's talking to. Woe unto you, scribes, and you Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are likened to whited sulfurs, that's dead people, see? whited sulfurs, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead man's bones and of all uncleansiness. Hypocrisies and envies and strife on the inside of them. Outside, I'm Dr. So-and-so. Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto man. Yeah. Look at the ecumenical council in the Pentecostal setting there. But within you're full of hypocrisies and iniquity. What is iniquity? Something that you actually know is right and you won't do it. Amen. Jesus. Now watch what, what generation he puts this on now. Warn to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. See? All oh, the prophets. And say, if we had been in them days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. We would have believed the word of the Lord if we'd lived back there. Watch. Wherefore you be witness unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which kill the prophets. Fill ye up than the measure of your fathers. That's just what's taking place. Now watch what he says here. Ye serpents and generation of vipers, 
How can you escape the damnation of hell? How can you do it? Now, he's talking to ministers. That's right. Holy man. How can you stand and know the Bible predicts and tells them people not to do that and you can stand and compromise for a few lousy stinking dollars Hallelujah. or some popularity and somebody would pat you on the back and call you a doctor. How can you say you love those people? I'm preaching on tapes too. You know? <laughs> how, can you, how can you say you love those people and let a thing like that take place? Amen. That you, you Amen. Pharisees, you blind, you serpents, you generation of vipers. Yes. How are you going to escape the damnation of hell? When you, how can a man today that knows that these things are wrong and stand there to hold his congregation to make his denomination grow and sh fail to tell women and man? Amen. How are you going to escape the wrath of hell when it was made for you? How are you going to do it? See? Listen. Listen here. What is it going to be? Therefore, 34th verse, Behold, I will send unto you prophets. I will in the future. There's your Pharisees coming back again. Wise man, scribes, and some of them you shall kill and crucify. And some of them shall you scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. He predicted he would send them prophets with the word of the Lord. And what would they do? The same thing their fathers did because that's what you are. Spirits don't die. Amen. Man that's possessed of them dies. But spirits don't die. Amen. He said, you're the children. You're the one. And this notice how these things are. How that St. Paul stood there. You believe he was a prophet? Yes. And condemned yes. women to bother. Yes, condemned the organizations. Yes. Announced that every man that wasn't baptized in the name of Jesus Christ must come and be baptized. Amen. 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 Right? Yes. Day they compromise and sweeten it around. They don't know no different, no. It's pitiful. Yeah. If the hour is over, I might say this. They were blind, predestinated to be blind. God be merciful, they couldn't see it. Jesus said, you're blind. You blind scribes and Pharisees. You hypocrites. When you read the same word that they, all of them's read, and here you come and condemn me. And I'm exactly what the Word said that it would be in this day. I was to be the messenger of this day. I'm the Messiah, he said in so many words. I'm the Messiah. And have I failed to prove it if I haven't done what was written of me and condemned me? And you blind Pharisees lead your people right off into things like that and send the whole bunch. Said, well, the blind leads the blind. Said, you're, you said, oh, if we would have lived back in time of St. Paul, yeah, I'd have took sides of St. Paul. You hypocrites. Why don't you take the side with his doctrine? Amen. You have done the same thing then you've done now. For you are the children of your fathers. <laughs> your organizational fathers. Pharisees, Sadducees, and self-righteous. That's, that's it. <laughs> I'll tell you at the hour that we live. I wonder if this could be the third pole. Amen. Just a minute now. Jesus said this kind receives greater damnation. Is it awful? As a great American one time, when the enemy is about to take this country, there's a man in the midnight hour jumped up on a horse, rode down the road screaming, the enemy's coming! Is Paul Revere. I'm an American too. I'm riding this midnight hour not saying the enemy's coming but he's here. Amen. He ain't coming he's already here. Amen. He's done conquered. I'm afraid. It's over. Conquer him. Yeah. This midnight hour. Remember at Tucson the seven angels what the message was the finishing of the mystery of God. Immediately after that Coming down the range, you all heard about the mountains. Yes. Notice, Brother Fred got some pictures of it. Brother Tom and I got some pictures, some movies and everything. We're going to show it here someday. Show you just where it's at. You all know the story. Yes. Amen. Watch. The three peaks. He 
He said, there's your first, second, third. And Brother Fred's got an outstanding picture of it when he and Sister Martha passed. The clouds had come up from the moisture of the ground and it hid all the rest of it and just showing the three pulls. One here, one here, and one there. The seven. Watch. The first three, three is perfection. That's when the ministry went forth. The second pull was a discernment of spirits, the prophecy. First was the healing of the sick. The second was the prophecy that went forth. Know the secret of the thoughts when the word itself was made manifest. Which, that's grace. But remember, the seventh is the finish. Could this be the finished pull? It's all over. Could it be? Think of it now. Just think where you at. Seven is always the finish. Three poles. Jesus' ministry consisted of three poles. Did you know that? Notice. Be sincere if you have those in your life now. For a minute, a few minutes. His first pull was healing the sick. He became a very popular man. Everybody believed him. See, is that right? When he went forth healing the sick, everybody wanted him in the church. But one day he turned around and started prophesying. For he was the Word. And he was the prophet that Moses spoke of. And when he went to tell him and tell him how they was living and the things they were doing, he become very unpopular. That was his second pull. Where if it has typed right back again? Just think a minute. Could it be? The first healing everybody. The second, oh... It could be Jesus only. It could be Beelzebub. It could be... A, that's the same thing they did there. Amen. See? Same spirits living in the same kind of people. Amen. Condemn people that can never be saved because they were condemned before. They, like Judas Iscariot, born the son of perdition. You say, Judas? Sure. Remember, he was very religious. But he couldn't go all the way with the message. Amen. Hallelujah. He could take part of it, but the rest of it he couldn't stomach. Amen. <laughs> They can take healing and things like that, but when it comes to God speaking squirrels into existence, that's too deep for them. Amen. Can't be. That was Judas. His spirit can live right up to that spot. Yes. He can't go after that. They could take Moses, all right, when he opened the Red Sea and so forth like that, but when he come down to telling there wasn't all the rest of them wasn't to do this or that or the other, he makes himself a God over us. See? They couldn't go that core in them. So... They had to have an organization, so God just swallowed him up. Jesus' ministry, when he's healing the sick, he is a wonderful. That young prophet of Galilee, why he makes the blind to see he's even raised the dead. We got three cases of it. He actually raised the dead. But one day he turned around. He said, you generation of vipers. You make the outside of the platter clean. You appear to be holy, but the inside of you are nothing but a bunch of snakes. Oh, when that prophecy went forth, condemning that organization... Then it changed. They turned against him. That's right. And finally, by rejecting him, they crucified him. But you can't kill the ministry. It lives on. You can put the messenger to sleep, but you can't put the messenger. Hallelujah. All right. Right. He lived on. And notice, when the third pull of his ministry come, the first was healing the sick. The second was rebuking the organizations and prophesying. What they had done, what they were, and what was coming. What is, what is, will come. And what was, what is, and what will come. That's what he did. Is that right? But his third pull is when he preached to the lost that couldn't be saved no more. They were down there where them big painted eyes was. Preached to the souls in hell that did not accept mercy, but were eternally separated from the presence of God. But yet they had to recognize that what he was because God made him there. Wonder if his ministry climbs out the same way in the last days as it was. As the Father sent me, so send I you. The works that I do shall you also. Lost could never be saved. They had rejected mercy. That was his third pull. Now, is there any question? His first pull, he healed the sick. Is that right? His second ministry, he was prophesying. His third ministry was preaching to the eternal lost. The three mountains. So forth. 
the lost eternal. Noah's ministry, all ministries done the same. Yeah. Noah preached. That's exactly right. He went into the ark. And when he went into the ark, there were seven days that nothing happened. His testimony preached to the doomed. Sodom and Gomorrah, Jesus referred to both of them as coming for the coming of the Son of Man, so shall it be like days of Noah, so shall it be like it was the days of Sodom. He referred to Noah. Noah had three pulls. And his third was to the lost at the door was shut. For God let it sit right there where nobody could enter or go out. They were inside. For on the seventh mountain. The highest mountain. That's where he settled the ark. Mountain. Is that right? In the days of Sodom, the first pull was a righteous lot. And the Bible said the sins of Sodom vexed his righteous soul daily. How them women acted and done. You remember, as it was in the days of Noah, what was he doing? Eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage. Amen. Women. See? Women. What was the days of, of Sodom? Women. And the first message was Lot. They laughed in the scorn. Then they sent another messengers, two of them. And they went out. That was the second pull for, Lot, for Sodom. But look at that one that went last. More and more mercy. It was all over then. All over at that time. That third messenger that went down there, the third pool, what was he? What kind of ministry did he have? He sat with the elected and told them what was taking place behind him. Is that right? But when he stepped off into Babylon, or into Sodom, he wanted to find even Abraham crying, if I could find... Fifty righteous. On down to ten righteous. God said, yes, find ten righteous. Let me tell you something, sister, just a minute. You might be old-fashioned, but you got something these sex queens hasn't got. You got something that she can never have. Right. You might be old-fashioned in your dressing, dress up like a lady. They might say, look at that old holy roller. Don't you worry. She's got something that that little old sex queen has got all the world looking at her out there. She hasn't got it. She can never have it. She's lost eternally. She's doomed. See? She's never... You got moral. You got virtue. She's got nothing. She's got a bait that traps the lost souls into hell. The blind walks into it. Now you got something. You know you might not be in on a church book, but it might be your righteous life is holding the wrath of God from the world today. The world won't believe it. You woman is called Holy Roller. You little man that don't hardly know anything but you cry to God day and night for the sins of the country. You might be the one that's holding off the wrath. If I can find ten, I'll spare it. If I find ten, as it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be. See what I mean? Not if I can find ten Methodists, if I can find ten Baptists, if I can find ten Pentecostals, if I can find ten athletes, if I can find ten senators, if I can find ten ministers, but if I can find ten righteous, Amen. there's one righteous, that's Christ. Christ living in one of them ten. I'll spare it. But that last messenger preached to the doomed. He, said, he went down there. Scripture don't say what happened. But far fell the next morning. Right. After he performed those signs, immediately after he performed his prophecy ministry, why did Sarah laugh? She said, I didn't. said, yes, you did. Now, immediately after that, he entered Babylon, or went out into Sodom. He never found him. So the fire fell. He found Lot and his two daughters to get out of here right now. It went out. He went down there. Remember, he was on his road down. He sent messengers before him, but he went out himself. Right, to find out all this thing was so and he found it full of what? painted face women yeah. Amen. the message to the doom what they do? laughed at it what do they do today? the same thing I belong to the assemblies I belong to the oneness I, I'm, uh, I danced in the spirit glory to God I speak it oh, go ahead I'll cut my hair if I want to I'll do this I'll, I'll just say this I don't have to be baptized in Jesus name I don't care what say Paul's old woman hater anyhow that's a alright go ahead 
One of these days, if you haven't already, you'll cross that line. You'll never desire no more to do what's right. Did you hear what I said? It's a matter of... Brother, sister, do you realize what's been said? You'll cross that line and you'll never want to do it. You'll still hear the gospel, sure, but you'll never accept it. You can't accept it. But the gospel will be preached to the doomed. Those that are eternally lost. Can't get saved no more. You're already in that spot and don't know it. You think you're living in pleasure and dead while you're alive. Huh. Listen. All those who rejected the message of the hour before doom, the gospel was preached to the doom first before they went, without mercy. Amen. Noah shut up. It was a testimony. God shut the door. After his third pull. After the third pull at Sodom, the doors were shut. There was no more mercy. The team couldn't be found. And the lost had the gospel preached that could not be saved. Because it was just, I've been that way in every age. Every age. Reject the message before judgment. Have they done it again? Is that appearing in a pillar of fire down here on the river? Is that appearing along in the message of cutting the women and throwing the places where it should be and rebuking those ministers who takes the place with the denomination instead of staying on the word? When God's thoroughly vindicated that it's Him and not some poor, ignorant, unlearned thing like a man. It's God! Amen! And have we now come to the spot that the third pool would return again to the lost eternally? Was that what that vision was giving me as a little bitty boy out hunter? And I have went west and there's a golden cross of the gospel shining down. It's declared the sign from the heaven just exactly. Remember the cross is in a panoramic like a, like a pyramid also built? See? Could it be that? It's a head part where it's ended and started to the here and come up to the headship like the pyramid come up to Luther Wesley Pentecost and then the capping of the stone could it be that if that's it where are we at it, this might, I hope it isn't but it's got to be it's going to be just remember that ministries has to be they always dovetail it's the same as the other it has to come that God don't change think of it bite your conscience with your spiritual teeth and find out where we are at. What if it is and you're still the way you are? Then you just might as well walk and you're finished. Amen. Then it's outside. After the book is taken by the Lamb, the sixth seal is revealed and all the seals, it's over. It could be. I hope it isn't. It could be. All right. Now, is that why this third pool has lingered so long? You notice the first pool and the second pool went from one to the other. I predicted, you remember when I first started about the first, and I said, there'll come a time that'll even know the secrets of the heart. You remember how many of you, well, all of you remember that in my meetings around. And one night I just walked into Regina, up there and walked on the platform, Brother Baxter there, several thousand people, and a man walked up the platform, and there it was. And from that it's been the same. But it's been years since I've come off the field. Four, about five years since I've come off. What is it? What's done this? Has that been why? And it was like in the beginning in Genesis, God's long-suffering. Remember, when He made the world, the seventh day He made nothing. He rested. See? God was long-suffering in that sixth year, not willing that any should perish, but all might come to repent. God was long-suffering. Again, also in Genesis 15, 16, if you want to put it down, 16, 15, he told Abraham, over in that land of the Amorites, their iniquity, they were Gentiles now. I can't take you in there right now because the iniquity of the Amorites, the Gentiles, is not pulled up yet. But I will judge them. I'll come in that fourth generation. Then I'll judge that nation with a rod of iron. Is that right? Has it been so long that God's long suffering, the ministry constantly through tape and everything else is combed across the world to see if there's one more, but maybe that last one come in just recently. Has it been? The iniquity? That's been, it's been so long? If Jesus is the same, 
which he is, Hebrews 13, 8, his message must be the same. Fixing or close. His action must be the same. If the first and second pull is without question, is there a question in your mind about the first and second pull? Did it come to pass just like he said? Amen. Then why question the third? Amen. 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 Why would you question it? The first two is identified by the Scripture. I proved to you this morning that the third is identified by the Scripture too. Amen. Look upon the world and see where she's at. Yes. Look how they have rejected the truth. Now it's been properly identified. The prophecy part. Now, where are we at? Oh, God, be merciful. It makes my heart bleed on the inside. What about it? Where are we at? Remember, these seven peaks up there, they can tell you, it's, there's not another peak beyond that. It's on the continental divide. It goes right into the desert from there on. Eternity sets in. Seven peaks right on the continental divide. That's the right between right and wrong. And at the end of that, the third pull was the last pull of the range. Is that right? All right. Noah went in, and after seven days, nothing happened. See, in seven days, the judgment comes. If only, listen now, in closing, if only in Noah's time, they would have knew that sign. If they would have only known, I'm going to close. If they would have only known that sign, the world in that day that God proved here by the reading of the scripture a while ago, he destroyed them people. Not without mercy. Mercy was sent to them by a prophet. They wouldn't believe it. God's merciful. But he sent mercy, but they wouldn't receive it. He always sends mercy first. What if they would have known that sign was the end time sign? And when they seen all at once, salvation let up nobody. See, just the first thing you know, the door's closed. If they, there's only one person know that sign, that was Noah and his group. That's the only one know. When that door swung together, Noah knew it. Noah knew that was the finish. He knew it. That's right. If you only knew the sign. Oh. If they would have only knew that sign. When they seen this one come in there. I've been up there with Abraham. If they only knew. That, that modern Billy Graham. Of that day. Went out there. Him and Laura Roberts. And preached that message to them blinded people. If they only know them old righteous Methodists and Baptists. Back under had been assigned to them. Of that day, Lot, when the sins vexed their very soul. Now, what did the Methodists and Baptists turn into? Like Lot did. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. But the righteous out there come out. Here. What if it was when Billy Graham went out, going up for decisions, chewing, chewing gum, punching one another, and laughing, bobbed hair, painted up faces, and not even make a bit of move about it. Come back the next day, and Billy said, I got 30,000 come back in a year, and I ain't got 30. Oh, I made a decision. I, I ain't going to hell, I'm going to heaven. Waiting right on in sin. If they don't, and then the gospel being preached, and the power and signs and wonders with a pillar of fire over it and everything going on just exactly, and predicted and set out. If they had a, they said, a bunch of holy rollers, it's mental telepathy, some kind of a witch spirit, a devil. That's all it is. Don't you believe it's not in our organization? We don't have to do with that. If they don't only knew the sign. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. If they'd only know. Jesus said. <laughs> said, if you'd have only known your day, Jerusalem. If you could only recognize. But said, now you're left to your own. If you'd have only known, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how off I would have hovered you as a hen would have brood from the judgments that's just to come. But you didn't know your day. You that stoned the prophets and killed the righteous. If you'd have only known your day. If you'd only know and have been up on your scripture and know that my coming was a sign of your end. Now you're blind. Now you've been rebuked. Your time is over. And it was. That's right. If you'd only know the time. Look, when Jesus made that declaration, the world went right on. See? The world went right on normally. Why? For they knew not their hour. The world went right on. When Noah went into the ark, the world moved right on. The scoffers in that day, they still had sex parties. They still eat, drink, marry, done the things they do today, just exactly, normally. <laughs> that old holy roller closed door. Did you ever hear such a thing? 
He always says, we're all going to be drowned in nonsense the words of water in. Scoffers, in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. All right. No one knew the sign. Same thing in the days of Lot. Same things in the days of Jesus. So is it today. They scoffed their last time. Same at Sodom. They never knew when that messenger was standing there. Message from God. They only laughed at him and tried to pervert them to their own acts. Is that right? Come in and join us. Be one of us. Is that right? Come in and join us. Be one of us. You be one of the boys. Come on. Join us. They never knew their sign. They didn't know that when that message is going on, that the very they couldn't see it, that the power and wrath of judgment is God, the fire blazes of brimstone was kindling in the skies. They couldn't see it. The messengers could. Lot knew it too. He knew it was there. Certainly, same as it is today. Just the same thing. Wrath is kindling. Atomic bombs are hanging. Everything's at the end. It's the same now. Look, people, listen. Did you know, you say, Brother Rambo, what about all of it? You know, people can go right on preaching the gospel like they always do, what they call the gospel. Yeah. It could be over. They did in the days of Noah. They did in the days of Lot. They did in the days of Jesus. Is that right? Even the Jews, after Jesus told them, the wrath, you're done. You're finished. There's no more. You're finished. I said that holy girl. What school did he come from? Where did he come That You remember, he was ready then for his third pull. That's right. He said, how often I hovered you. Lot made his last call. I mean, the angel did. The messenger. Ever who he was. God represented for this day. God represented in human flesh. Made the last sign. Performed the last duty. It's all over then. Noah preached his last sermon. The door closed behind him. That was all. They laughed at it made fun of it. Think. The people can go right on preaching. The ecumenical council can join up with the Catholic Church just as he promised you. All organizations can come on. But the mark of the beast is already there. Amen. They take it in that. See? And they say, oh, hallelujah, bless God. They, so many got saved last night. They did. They danced in the Spirit. They spoke in tongues. That don't mean one thing. Amen. Oh, they're meek and gentle and humble. Yes, sir. They got the fruit of the Spirit. That's no sign. Amen. Not a bit. Let me give you the fruit of the Spirit between Jesus and the Pharisees. See which one had the fruit of the Spirit. What if I stood, as I started to say a while ago, against Christ now for a minute. God forgive me for even saying it, see. But just to show you something. What if I come to you and say, Say, you congregation, who is your friend? Who shows the fruit of the Spirit? Your kind old priest. Who comes to you in a hospital when you're sick? Your gentle old priest. That's right. Who is it that always loans you some money when you're up against it in a tight place? You members of his congregation. Don't you go to your kind old priest and he loans you money? See? Who is as always loving and kind and showing the fruit of the Spirit? Your kind old priest. Who is it that studied for years and years in the synagogues down here where his great, 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 great grandfather come from? All the way down. Who is it studied and got worked hard and got doctor's degrees and PhDs and LLDs to know this word and stand here and deliver it to you every Sunday morning in his congregation? Your kind old priest. Who is this renegade called Jesus? What school did he come from? What school is he out of? Where is his fellowship card? What organization does he belong to? What does he do? When you all have a family argument, who comes to you, your kind old priest? To have tried to, and you have an argument against this neighbor over here, and your kind old priest comes and makes you up and said, You are a children of God. You shouldn't do that. That's what he... What's this Jesus of Nazareth does? Tears the thing up! What does he do? Blame blast your organization! What does he do? Called your priest the blind leader of the blind. He called him a snake in the grass. 
He took the sacrifice that God ordained and kicked the tables over and throwed the money out. And looked upon him with anger. Did you ever see your priest look like that? Now where's the fruit of the Spirit? <laughs> Not by speaking in tongues. Not by dancing in the Spirit. Not by joining church. Not by fruit of the Spirit. Christian science cannot smother any of you on that. Amen. And deny even Jesus Christ was divine. Amen. Not that! But it's the Word living. Amen. There it is! Amen. If they only look, He was Messiah. He was a living Word made manifest. And a man that's got the Spirit of God in him or a woman lives that Word, lives right out in him. That's the heartbeat, the predestinated. For the Word of the Lord comes to them and they are the Word to the people. Written epistles, read of all man. Is that right? Could the third pull be on? Tape people that you listen to this tape. I wish you could look at this congregation this time. I hope you're feeling the same way. What if it is? Look at the scriptures piled in here. Could it be? Is the third pull to preach to the eternal doomed that's rejected the message of salvation? Well, you say the church is going... Yeah, they will. They'll go right on. It's the same. But remember, all this time... Noah was in the ark. The bride is sealed in with Christ. The last member has been redeemed. The sixth seal has produced itself. The seventh seal brings him back to earth. The lamb come and took the book out of the right hand of him and sat down and claimed what he owned, what he had redeemed. Is that right? It's always been that third pool. Three is perfection. The ministry come to its perfection when it reproduced Christ again and natural amongst human beings as was predicted as it was in the days of Lot. Oh, think people could go right on preaching, thinking they're getting saved, believing they're doing right, believing their organizations are growing. Sure. And not even a ray of hope. And if that vision was that and it's been so hard against women, we have come to that hour. Doors closed. Gone. Already the book is in his hand. Think of it. Let me tell you this. Just before closing now, I'm closing. It was told about an Ireland facing the waters. There's a great reef that goes down along the side of the bank. And up on this great hill, and there was a man going walking along there one day just just at the time for the tides to come in. And there was a noble man who lived on the hill that knew these tides. He knew the time of day that the tides are supposed to come. He knew what time the tides set in. This guy didn't care what time. He was one of these know-it-alls. He had his own idea. He was an athletical man, smart, intelligent fellow, but he just didn't know the time of the tide. He didn't know the country he didn't know the time the sign was right when the moon had dropped its back from the earth. And when God ever drops His Spirit from the earth, brother, she's gone. It's all over. That moon would ever move out of its place, the waters would cover the earth like it was when God started in Genesis 1. But the moon sat there, and when He just even turns its head, the tides start running in. This wise old man who lived there in the presence of it knowed what time that was. This guy didn't know. He never studied it. He didn't care about it. And this wise old man ran out and said, My good man, darest thou go any farther? Turn back quickly. There's a wall. You can't get up the wall. You're perished. It's, it's, the signs are on. The time, the, the tide will gush in all at once and you cannot return. Don't go any farther. And the man turned around and laughed at him and said, Go take care of your own business. I know what I can do and what I can. And the tides caught him. It may be later than we think. Eh? It'll catch you. Don't go any further. Don't you do it, people. If you've always believed in me as being God's servant, take my word this morning, if you ever did. It might be already too late. 
So much scripture shows it that way. Now remember, I don't say that it is. I don't know. But just look. And I've cut off about ten pages here that I was afraid to tell you. <laughs> Mrs. Woods is a record of that, Mr. Woods. And I went out this morning to see him. I said, I, I can't tell him. I can't go that far. I just put this much scripture and leave it with him. Because it's going to be taped. It'll go into people who laugh at this message. It's all right. It'll be a past turning back one of these days. Go on. Just be a church member. Cut off your hair. Paint your face. Go on. Take Father, Son, Holy Ghost if you want to do that. Make it three gods and be a he. Go on. Stick to your organization. Do so if you want to. Say, I danced in the Spirit. I spoke of tongues. I got it. I've seen devils do the same thing. I've seen witches speak in tongues and interpret it and write in unknown tongues and interpret it. Who drank blood out of a human skull and called on the devil. Danced in the Spirit. Mohammed's dancing in the spirit like that until they can take spinners and run around their fingers and take a lance and run up through their face like that and pull it out and not even a drop of blood will come out of it. The Indians will walk on fire barefooted, three foot deep and four, three or four foot across, blow way cold so they're white hot and never get a scorch on their feet. And deny there is such a thing as Jesus Christ. No, no, friend. It's the Word that tells it. The people and the Word has got to be one. Amen. Jesus and the Word was the same. He was the Word. And when Jesus lives in the human being, that makes Him and the Word the same. Amen. Don't Your life tells what you are. Now just look at yourself in God's looking glass. Say, how do I look this morning while we pray? something. Is there a spot in your heart that seems to be darkened by sin? If it is, now is the time to get rid of it right now, if there is mercy left. This, I hope, isn't so. I hope it isn't there. But doesn't it look like it could be? Listen what the Holy Spirit said in the midst of the people after I got through. It's a voice unto you. And if there's, if you've got any darkness on your life, won't you come right here around the altar now while we continue saying, right now, if there's a weary, if there's a spot, don't put it off any longer. 
hoping and trusting that this is not so. But it will be one of these days, and it might be today. And now, Lord, I'm come with the breath of your nostrils right around you. If the tape people could only see what's going on out here now. Just crowding over one another, crying, coming from everywhere. Good. That vision when I was a little boy, is it the hour? Is this the time? When I'm weary, looking gloomy, hell being created right here on earth. Alders and aisles and everything are filled now. If you can't get around altar or aisles anywhere amongst these hundreds here, just stand up if you say, I want to stand and pray just so people might know or kneel, whatever you want to. Oh, my. Now you can't hardly see anyone sitting down. It's people standing everywhere. May I say this? God forbid. God forbid that what I've said is now. May I understand it, everybody. God forbid that I got children that's not in. I've got two daughters and a son. I've got brothers. I've got my people that's not in. God forbid that grace has left us. That all this will only be pretending. Is there grace left, Lord? Let me be wrong on this, Lord. Let it be wrong at this time that I, it isn't that people still can be saved. Grant it, Lord. I pray and commit this audience to you now in the name of Jesus Christ. Everybody pray now. Just like, what if it was? Now, I don't know that it is, but what if it was? You pray in your way. I just pray the way you want to pray. Just what if this was the truth? What would we do, friends? What would we do? What's going to happen? Now pray, everybody. Just, just pray the way you want to. Just cry right out to God in your own way. Oh, God. Thine arms of love. Oh, Lord. I'm coming. Oh, Lord, I intended to do it a long time ago. Have I waited too long, Lord? Is this is it over? Oh, God, open your arms of love and receive me. Something in my heart begging for it, Lord. Open once more. If my name was on the Lamb's book, speak to me now, Lord. Let me receive it right now. Please do, God. Come their only son been killed. No. You outside, you in your cars with a short wave. You that's standing around the building. Many of you. Just lean your head against the building and say, Lord, God, be merciful to me. Oh. Be dying, sincere friends. Think what time we are living. Where are we at? Oh, Lord. These hundreds, literally hundreds, seeking me at this time. Take away every sinful block, Lord, and take them in today. I, I plead with all my heart. As we see not only somebody talking, but the Scripture itself bringing us to this hour. And that vision of a little boy seeing those people in that condition. Now think that hell itself, mercy's been blotted from the earth. 
And uh, hell itself is here. And the people, Lord, are in this hideous condition. Almighty God, on this elected church, I pray, God, that you'll pour out your blessings, that they might receive a, a ministry of testimony that like Lot had, like Noah had, like Jesus had, uh, to the eternal lost, if it be there, that they themselves are sealed into the kingdom of God, but given witness to Jesus Christ being the same yesterday, today, and forever. Grant it, Lord. May you receive our petition as we plead in Jesus' name. Just pray the way you want to pray now. Don't be in no hurry. Don't be in no hurry. What if you're the last name to go on the book? I'm coming home. Coming home. Coming home. What if you walk up? The pastor's going to pray now with you while you're praying. Almighty oh, God, our Heavenly Father, as it were today, we're so glad that you have given us, as it were this moment, of time to be able to consider our ways before thee. Our God, today from the depths of our soul we cry unto thee, Lord, in behalf not only of ourselves but one another. Let this our God be the time this morning, Father, when Thou shalt, if Thou hast yet extended mercy, Father, let it be that these who have this day forsaken all of their pride, fancy, and other things. Lord Jesus, today we pray that Thou grant that the ones that are kneeling and bowing their head all over this building, Oh, God, let that voice from heaven speak this morning. Give an assurance, Lord. Let these men that are dying, men and women, Jesus, let us have this day the consolation of that witness coming down upon him this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are pleading, Lord, if there be yet an extension of mercy through the blood, let it be upon each one this day, according to their coming. May it be so today, and may each one, Lord, satisfied this day, that Thou, being Almighty God, if this be the extension of mercy, let it be unto each one individually. Let it be now, Father, and let the peace of God that has always passed understanding. Let it come again to waiting hearts. Yes, Lord. Let this be the hour. Yes. We believe that you have heard from heaven. God granted. Whatever is in store for us, if it be over, then, Lord, we know what the final is. Yes, Lord. But if not, let the witness come. Yes, Lord. Let these that have come let them find peace this day through Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Lord Jesus, I pray that you'll save Becky and Sarah and Joseph and them too, Lord. Don't let this happen to my children, Lord. Don't let it happen to my brothers, my friends. Granted, Lord, we don't know, we don't know. But we're seeing something, Lord. Is it a shaking sign right now before us? Yeah. Grant it, Lord. Draw us all close to you. Quickly, Lord. Yeah. We love you and we need you. Yeah. Let it be, Father. Yeah. The Holy Spirit, give us comfort in our hearts yeah. now. We pray that we might be witnesses to you in this hour. For we know yeah. this has got to happen. It's been predicted through the ages. And we must face it, that we're at the end time when we see these signs appearing. We know and have been told for many years now that this thing shall take place. Now we sit right in our door. Great mighty wrath of God moving through the streets. Taking out the uncircumcised. Where there's no blood on the door, the death angel visits. And they go right on living, but dead while they're living. Without mercy, without God, you can never be saved. 
God, how we thank you for these who are saved. How we, how what a great blessing it is to our hearts to be on the inside now, under the blood. While that last angel passes through the land, taking out the the ones out from her of the blood, they die without mercy. That was Moses' last pull. First, a young man talking to Israel. Second, went out to deliver them. Third was the last message that miracles had been done. Moses was on his road to the promised land with the redeemed. Oh God, be merciful, I pray. In Jesus' name. Now, I'd like to ask this, you who are praying, you who feel that you have mercy, and that God, you feel that you're in the kingdom of God, you feel that, that you've been anchored somehow or another, that in Christ... You have faith to believe that you are a Christian, you are born again, and you know that you are a Christian, and without doubt, I wish you'd all stand up, you that want, uh, believes that, it, that mercy has been extended to you now, and you are Christians, and you're, you uh, believe yeah. that, that the blood is applied to your heart, and you, that you're forgiven of every sin. Uh, this was a very hard thing to speak to you people. I'm so thankful to see the people up from everywhere. And you, I, I so I don't know that this thing is true, but it's got to be that way sometime. See, it's got to come to that, and it could be now. See, in every way, the world will carry right on. People still come to the altar; they'll still cry out, but it won't do no good. See? They'll be gone. See? It'll be over. There won't be no mercy. Remember that. And the sanctuary becomes smoky. He that's filthy is filthy still. He that's righteous is righteous still, and he that's holy is holy still. There's no more mercy. When the Lamb takes the book, that's it. That's all of it. And it looks a whole lot like it could be now. Maybe we have another day. Maybe today's that day. Maybe tomorrow's the last Maybe the night's the last night. Maybe this is the last year. I don't know, friends. I'm telling you, I don't know. It'll never be told. But when God takes that last name, and redeems it from that book of life. That's all. See, it can't be no more anyhow. It can't be no more anyhow. That's all. It's finished. How many know that's the truth? Amen. Amen. It's, it's the truth. Yes. Now, that we do feel, and I see this congregation that I've preached to and warned all these years, and see a message like this that I, that I brought in this amateur form. Just remember, I say it so that you'll understand it. Amateur form. Some more things could just almost shuck you out to pieces. But I just omitted it. Felt to do it. Because I'm not sure. If I'm not sure where I'm treading, I'll tread easy. See, But just telling you. Listen. Aren't you happy? Could there be anything greater that you could think of that you've done in your life? What if it's over now? What if it's all done? Well, you say, Brother Bram, maybe... Uh, yeah, I know they could go right on. They did each time. I've explained that and proved it by the Scripture. Amen. The world continued rolling right on, but it was done. See, the foolishness of preaching saves the lost. And it's foolishness to man. It's the wisdom of God. See, God is a spirit. He works in spiritual ways. See, His wonders to perform. Wondrous ways. But we are human. We are finite. We don't know. We just look up on what we can see. But something within us. When you walk out of that room here, if you never had it seen in your life, never had seen daylight, you'd know that you passed from this room here into a sunlight or something. It was warm. You could feel it. If there's no sense of your body to declare it, you would know only no sense of sight to see it. No way to see the green trees, to see the nature. You didn't have sight. Nobody ever had it. You'd know you'd be in the presence of something. Your feeling would tell you that. You know that if I try to tell you it's the sun, it reflects, it shows things. See, you'd know that it was there because you could feel it with your feelings. Is that right? Now, we know that Christ is here. Amen. See? Maybe you don't see Him with your eyes. See? Maybe you don't. But through vision, I tell you, He's here. Amen. We feel it. We know there's something here that our senses doesn't declare. It's the Spirit declares it, that yeah. Christ is here. Right. I feel it. He has redeemed us. I feel that our names are on this book. I believe that we've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I love you. And I know you love one another. 
Oh, blessed be the ties that bind yes. yeah. our hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of kindred mind is like to that above. We should always feel that way to one another. See? We must, we must feel that way to one another. See, because as we love one another, we love God. Can you hate your brother who you have seen to say you love God who you have not seen? We must love each other. Greater love has no man than he that laid down his life for his enemy that they might become his friends. Oh, you know that song, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds? Isn't it wonderful? Blessed be the tie. Would you give us a card on that, sister? Just let it play a minute. What if it's over? What if the third pool coming up now is to preach to the lost? What if all the types are going to show forth now? And we're in. And we're in. Wouldn't that be wonderful? What a fellowship. Oh, bless me. Here's what does it. of kindred minds thy kingdom come thine will be done see we try to make God a, a mascot boy Aaron or something God do this do that Jesus said pray thy kingdom come thine will be done in earth as it is in heaven then heaven is brought down to us and we we are brought up to heaven and we're sitting in heavenly places now in Christ Jesus we all believe that message to be the truth that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, redeems us. Let's close our eyes now and raise our hands while we sing it. Bless me, the not smiling time with a deepness of sincerity while that song's playing let's shake hands with them somebody by say God bless you Christian with sincerity God bless you Now let's raise our hands up to Him. When we asunder part, it gives us inward pain. But we shall still be joined in heart and hope. bow our heads and together not knowing what the future holds at this moment not knowing but what it's over I don't know I can't say I can't say I don't know but in the face of what facts that we have revealed this morning let us pray the prayer the Lord told us to even if it is, thy kingdom come, thine will be done. Let us do it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come.
Thine will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now with our hearts bowed, the Bible said they sang a hymn and went out. Remember, when they did that in the Scripture, it was because they had crucified the ministry of our Lord's second pull, and the third pull was ready to enter. A few hours after that, He ascended into hell and preached to the lost that had rejected their mercy. A cord of my faith looks up to thee. My faith looks up to thee. Thou and of Calvary, Savior divine, now hear me while I pray, take all my sins away, no. Son and grace to shine upon you and the Lord give you eternal life and be with you here in this world and the world that is to come hereafter and life eternal may you serve him all through the aeons of time that is to come if this is the time and we have arrived at that place I am not ashamed of what I have preached Hallelujah. And if each minister has to stand with his congregation to be judged as a saw in the vision, I'm thankful for the gospel that I've preached because it's the same gospel that Paul and them preached. I am happy for you. I am happy that you have received Christ as your Savior. Love Him and pray, and I'll see you this afternoon, the Lord willing, at 7 o'clock here at the church. God bless you. You're dismissed. <laughs>